Okay, welcome back. We're still waiting the first count here in the Clarion Hotel in Sligo. If I didn't mention it earlier, Ireland were beaten in the rugby by England by 21 points to 10. Um, it's now uh, 20 past 7. We're expecting the first count. John told us it was going to be at around half past 7. John, I'm sure we're not too far away from it. Uh, the, first, the first count, John. I'm sure we're not too far away from the first count. The first count, we're just looking for a time for the first count. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, okay. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, I said. Okay. Not change. Okay, uh, right, Francie, now I know a lot of people want to, are, are tuned in, wanting to watch what's happening. Yeah. They want to access tallies and you have a bit of updated information. Yeah, so if, you, if you've been watching... If you've been watching uh, YouTube, it might have uh, stalled or you know froze. It's just we've updated that link now. So all you got to do is just go back onto Ocean of Hem Ireland Facebook or on Twitter uh, at Ocean of Hem Ireland. The new links are now pinned to the top. That's all you got to do. So it's just re-click the link uh, for YouTube on uh, Facebook or on Twitter at Ocean of Hem Ireland. And by the way, if you have any questions for us on uh, the Sligo Leitrim count and what's going on and when can we expect the first count, etc., just like that one for uh, with John Cominsky. Hashtag Sligo Leitrim at Ocean of Ireland. So that's at Ocean of Ireland using the hashtag uh, Sligo Leitrim. But as I say, um, new updated links. You can continue to watch live here from the Clarion Hotel in Sligo. Facebook, Ocean of Ireland, or on Twitter at Ocean of Ireland. John, it's just amazing the way it, it comes and goes, isn't it? There was a huge crowd this morning and up until the first tallies, and then there was a bit of a lull, and all of a sudden they're all starting to gather around again as we wait the first count because they're aware of what's happening outside and they know now they're, they're perhaps more aware than we are here as to what's happening because we're keeping them informed we're expecting as we have been since nine o'clock this morning that we'd have the first count at eight o'clock so they're now making their way back they really trust us and believe us that it will be eight o'clock and they want to go and have some food and everything and make their way back Okay, and um, just to repeat again that um, this count obviously will not be completed by today and Portugal, Portugal already made that announcement at 9 o'clock this morning that this will go into a second day and it will go into a long second day as well. There won't be anybody elected, just in case people are you know, trying to get a timeline of what happens. Nobody elected today and um, it will be well into more before the first candidate is elected. It will certainly be late tomorrow after afternoon before we have any candidate elected at all. Uh, I'm expecting that we maybe, if we're lucky tonight, get through and maybe two counts along with the first count. Okay. And we may get three, but we certainly will get two counts today, yeah, maybe and, three. And any indication yet? Are you hearing any whispers as to what time proceedings will, will wrap up this evening? Oh yes, I'm still thinking that it'll be 11 o'clock. Well, depending, depending on how the returning officer feels as to what is as to what is happening, uh, if he decides to go for an, a fourth count, he may. Uh, but in or around 11 o'clock, obviously, if he thinks at five to 11 that it's going to take until 12 o'clock to get a neck, another count going, then he won't start it. So it could be it could be breaking up any place before 11 or shortly after, but around 11 o'clock. Okay, Paddy O'Rourke has arrived at the count centre. Uh, Paddy, uh, the, um, Sorry, one of the three Fianna, Fianna Fáil candidates um, from Carrie Gallen and County Leitrim, Councillor Paddy O'Rourke. Paddy, you're welcome. Thanks for joining us on, on Ocean FM. Just stick on your headphones, Paddy. No, Paddy. Yeah, you're sorted now. And uh, well, Paddy, a fantastic performance. I'm sure you're delighted with um, what the tally men will say is over 5,100 votes in the first count. I'm sure you're delighted with that. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, I think it was a wonderful achievement on behalf of those who worked for me in such short circumstances. Because bear in mind that I was only nominated at bedtime on the 16th of December, or 16th of January, should I say. I got a telephone call from party headquarters <coughs> on the 16th of December yep. to tell me that I had been officially added to the list and that I was required in Dublin the next morning. Now, that didn't leave me very much time. When you look at the list of candidates, the majority of the candidates had been, some of them had been nominated 18 months ago, some of them had been nominated 12 months ago, etc., and had all been out and about meeting the people and whatever. Yeah. But from the moment I was nominated, a group of very dedicated workers set to work, both in Leitrim and West Cavan. And, and that's reflected, isn't it, in, in, the, in the figures 
that came out for you in those areas in particular? Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, you know, if, if things had been different, if I had having a longer run into this, I think it was really game on. You think it could have it got could, Oh, absolutely, it could have been, because the, like, there were certain things that... Uh, I mean, you have to be r realistic about this. Somebody who's got 12 months at a campaign, prior to getting that phone call on the 16th of January, I couldn't even think about doing the ordinary things that a candidate has to do to put a campaign in place, because I didn't know whether it was going to be me or one of a number of others that might be selected or for that matter was anybody going to be added unfortunately that was the state of play at party headquarters okay um now uh, your your votes are obviously going to be hugely significant paddy in deciding the outcome of this uh, constituency what, what are your views on that or your thoughts and what are your supporters telling you well, I mean, there's obviously, you know, there's a very considerable amount of my vote will be a straight party vote, mm. but there will be equally another section of that vote that may be breaking across the lines. You know, I, 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 I can't speculate yeah. to, a, to a definite as to where they're going to go. Okay. I would like to think that they, that they will continue to assist my party, but uh, there's yeah. no absolute science in this. And um, in relation to Fianna Fáil getting two seats in this constituency, Paddy, what, any thoughts on that? Oh, well, it's game on. I mean, I, I, I have a very substantial number of votes there to be distributed. I would like that they will contribute to doing that. Okay, um, the poll topper Mark McSherry has arrived. We'll be talking with Mark McSherry in a moment. Obviously, um, it's caused uh, a, a media scrum because I think the only certain thing we can say is that he will be elected. He's the only certainty at this stage to be elected. Um, did you, uh, you were a latecomer to the campaign, Paddy, not your fault, as you say. Did you enjoy the campaign? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, it was a bit of a roller coaster in so far as that. <coughs> Excuse me. As I said, at tea time on the 16th yeah. of December, I didn't know I was going to be a candidate. Moments later, I was a candidate. And, you know, everything changed from that moment forward until last night at close of polls. Paddy, thanks for joining us. Stay with us because your, you. your party colleague, Mark McSharry, has joined us. Um, yeah, not me. Uh, Mark, Mark McSharry. Just him. I, I, Thanks for joining us, Mark. Thank you. Um, I, 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 well, I, I don't know really what to do. I mean, it, congratulations are premature, we know. It's not over till it's over, as Paddy Rourke said. But you must be absolutely delighted with your performance. Totally humbled with the vote, to, to be quite honest. The first preference vote. It's been a, a, a very difficult campaign for, for all 18 candidates who have, who have gone to all the counties who have uh, bared great weather elements early in the campaign that was very difficult for everybody and uh, I know before any vote was counted today all 18 would have been glad to have got through it and got to today and, and all put up a very brave campaign, a very clean campaign, a very mature campaign and uh, um, you know democracy is always the winner. I think five years ago I said you know people people have their say and, and uh, while certainly it's encouraging for me and we're all humbled and, and all the team I have uh, with, the, with the great uh, vote, uh, not just for me but for, for Eamon and Paddy, uh, but all the candidates I think have put in just such a tremendous campaign. Well, I, I mean, you've almost doubled your vote. I mean, that's just, uh, that's just some turnaround from five years ago. Yeah, I mean, um, I suppose after the election the last time, I remember very well um, very late in the evening, the concession speech and, and saying to, to our three representatives that, you know, democracy is always the winner and, and people get who, who, who they choose and who they think is going to do the best job. Uh, and, and, and of course they have. Um, and, and that we would all be behind them. And, 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 and that's what it's about. And ultimately, whatever way things pan out tomorrow, whatever four are elected, the big challenge for all of us, party politics, coalition negotiations, all of that stuff aside, uh, the challenge for our area in this part of the country, which was the theme of my own campaign and indeed most of the other candidates, is they have to be prepared to act as one okay. because we've been a neglected region uh, and we need, albeit in times of uh, 
perhaps towards the end of austerity to make sure uh, that we get our fair share here. So look, uh, totally humbled by the vote, overwhelmed. I can't thank my theme, yeah, well, why, uh, my why family you, in particular. Why, why do you say that? Why, do you, why are you humbled by this? Why, why is that the overriding emotion that you have today? Because all of the 18 candidates have put in the same effort. They all have put in a great campaign over the last number of weeks. And, you know, the nature of politics is that there's going to be people who are going to be successful and, and, and there's people who won't make the grade on this occasion. There's always law LF for everybody, but I'm truly humbled by the first preference vote, considering there were 18 candidates. And, and sure, I mean, after the last election, I said to myself, OK, you know, you lick your wounds uh, and you say to yourself, what way is this going to have to you know, work over the next period and, and uh, so for five years, or most of those five years, we did 13 clinics a week in three different counties um, and worked as hard as we could through that basis and I suppose in one of the few that were there nationally in terms of the Senate for Fianna Fáil, it was the first time Fianna Fáil and it's, it, it's an example of where it went wrong over the years, okay. was that um, they had lost touch with the ground and over the last five years we had an opportunity to make Fianna Fáil a pliable organisation that responded policy-wise and proposal-wise to the will of the people and I think nationally when you look at the poll, you know, that seems to be resonating and that has to be a positive thing for democracy as a whole because one thing, when I was very young, when I was about 14, I met Paddy Hillary who had recently retired as president and um, I don't know what the conversation was about specifically, but he, he spoke of politics generally. He said no government should ever be in power for any more than maybe a term and a half. Because, as he put it, they forget the price of a pint of milk or how to drive a car. And certainly, metaphorically speaking, that's been true of governments uh, who failed. And uh, when I think of the mistakes that were made of Fianna Fáil in the past, um, that was certainly true. Uh, the challenge now and over the last five years, and what we've certainly tried to do of the 14 senators and 18 or 19 TDs, uh, was to learn from those mistakes. And, and I hope, and I'm very encouraged by the fact that looking at the polls nationally, while it's still early days count-wise, uh, you know, I think we have, and I think people, um, you know, have taken on board that, that, that we have. Okay, right. Okay, well, no doubt we will be talking to you. It is, it is premature, of course. Um, it will be tomorrow in relation to your election and I'm sure you don't want to start celebrating yet. And no, no, no. I know you don't. And I, I, can you, if you just allow me to say yeah. very briefly, uh, I'm not in here in any celebratory mood at all. I'm hugely encouraged and humbled by the first preference vote uh, and that of my party colleagues uh, and, and, and simply want to pay tribute to all 18 candidates for an excellent campaign. All the debates went very well. You've presided over many over the years and I think they were good natured and focused on the issues and I'm glad to have been and played a part in that. I'm very hopeful as, as we look forward to the future counts. I certainly hope I make it. Uh, but if whatever is to be will be to thank everybody who participated in the election and everybody who voted for any candidate because that's what this is all about. Okay, and just before we let you go, have you been talking to your, your father, Ray, yet? He's been here from an early hour this morning or have you had a chance to have a... Just very briefly, uh, as I arrived there, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm from a very big family, as, as probably, people probably know, and uh, you know, they form much of my election team. My campaign manager is Edel McSherry Hughes, who, um, frankly, if, if you wanted me to pick one difference between this campaign and any others that I was involved in, uh, it was Edel McSherry. She's out on her own. Okay, Mark McSherry, thanks uh, for joining us. We know uh, you're in great demand. Uh, we'll talk to you, no doubt, lots of times between now and tomorrow evening. Thanks very thanks much, again for, for joining us. Thank okay, you. that's um, Mark McSherry, Paddy O'Rourke. Paddy, thank you for joining us. Pascal, uh, just a reflection on that. Um, well, it's, it's I like mean, a scene from times past, as I say, with, with, the, with the celebrations amongst the Fianna Fáil contingent here. Yeah, but I, I also think that it's a big, like, Shari family celebration. Uh, I think that they saw this uh, as a part of a journey. Um, Ray had represented this constituency for so long. In fact, my late father, and Ray often acknowledged this, was responsible uh, for his election. And I couldn't help but reflect listening to, uh, to uh, Mark and to Paddy that in the context of the question you asked Paddy about transfers, um, that when my father stood in a, a rump, which was a rump of Leitrim, Sligo at the time, 
uh, the question was what would happen as transfers, and as transfers went t primarily to Ray McSharry. Uh, and Ray to this day will acknowledge that that was the reason he got elected in 1969. So uh, if that's history, it may be history repeating itself to some degree, maybe with, um, with Mark and with Eamon Scanlon. Yeah. Um, but we'll have to wait and see that. Well, well, uh, I, I have to also say, and I said it earlier, I, I feel dreadfully, um, or let's say I, s I have a lot of empathy with Paddy O'Rourke in, in his comments about coming late into the game. Um, to get 5,200 votes, not only against formidable uh, candidates such as Jerry Reynolds and Martin Kenny, but also Mark McSharry and the McSharry machine, because the McSharry machine, yeah. you know, okay. was, was overwhelming. You, you, were, you were missing for a discussion we had earlier, Michael, yes. Michael Kilcoyne was on with us, and um, there's a few of the, of the, well he's in the, in the McSharry camp, but he's also involved in the tallies. And there seems to be an increasing feeling that, that Fine Gael are in pole position for two seats there in this constituency. Well, I know that they're, they're saying that because of tradition uh, in relation to the Leitrim vote, uh, but I haven't seen any of the uh, tallies for the second pre third preferences. And the strange thing is, Niall, and you will know this from your own experience, despite or in spite of people uh, giving opinions about transfers. I'm afraid that there isn't the same intensity and focus put on transfers uh, uh, comprehensively as there is on the first count. And what you end up with is piecemeal. You end up with perhaps a couple of boxes, some cuts and some of the booths that are showing a particular pattern. And then everybody then says, oh, well, that's the pattern. So I, I, I've been always very reluctant with transfers as to what would happen. Remember, we're talking here about Paddy staying in for some considerable time in yes. this election yeah. on 5,200 votes. And there's going to be uh, inter-party and independent transfers leading up to the point where his uh, votes are going to be distributed. So from that point of view, I'm not going to speculate on where the fourth seat. I don't oh, think any of us have, and I'm certainly not going to speculate where the fourth seat. I'm still clinging to the view that Eamon Scanlon uh, is there to fight. And I think I might have said a few hours back that in light of Jerry Reynolds' first uh, preference tally vote, uh, that he now is in the game. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not prepared to concede that Fianna Fáil are not going to take that fourth seat. All right. for the okay. That's, uh, but the, or let's say that there was a chance of taking that, a strong chance of taking that fourth seat. Okay, I'll bring John in in a moment. Just to let listeners know, uh, we're expecting the first count very, very shortly, and we won't miss it. Obviously, we'll be bringing it to you live as part of the Grady returning officer announced it. Uh, John, any thoughts on what Mark or Paddy or Pascal has said? to say there a few moments ago. Well, I missed the early part of what Pascal was saying there, but it's certainly interesting. I'm going back to our interview with Jackie McGowan there. 80 years of age, isn't it? Brilliant that we have such people who can have such stamina and devote themselves to the elections. He was here. He stood for election, as we said earlier today. He stood for Sligo County Council. And he mentioned about that epic 1969 vote, the 1969 election, at which Pascal's father, the Lord of Mercy, was a candidate in that election as well, when Joe McLaughlin, Ray McSharry and James Gallagher. Incidentally, for that campaign, we had three Labour candidates here uh, in Sligo Leith from that time. The, Tommy Higgins was one of them, former Mayor of Sligo. The, James Gallagher and Paddy O'Rourke uh, were the other two. And, of course, defeated that time was Eugene Gilhawley, uh, again RIP. A lot of these are long gone to their eternal reward now. Uh, so it certainly brings back memories to a lot of us who were present at that at that time. Uh, I'm not, sorry, Niall, just I'm not sure if uh, John picked up on my my earlier remarks about that particular election. Uh, that my father was a major contributor to the election of Ray McSharry in 1969 in the transfers. And the question at that time is the question we're now asking so many years later: What's going to happen to the transfers? But my father's transfers were pretty solid at that time. Ray, to this day, will acknowledge that it was primarily responsible for his election at that time. So I, I, that's why I, I'm a little uncomfortable about speculating about where Paddy O'Rourke's vote is going to go at this okay. stage. I want to bring in uh, Porrick Hart again from the, uh, the master of all the tallies. Uh, Porrick, just a couple of comments for you. And I should say, just in case, there's a lot of background noise and I have to tell, and this will be understandable, it's now getting absolutely thronged here in the Clarion hotel as we wait the first count. Yeah, Niall, it's getting very, very thronged uh, indeed, but um, um, 
Hello. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Niall, it's getting very thronged in here, but that's because the, the first count is getting very, very near now, and the piles of votes to be counted are extremely small, and I would say in the next half hour, or a little along with it, uh, we're going to have the returning officer giving us the first count. Um, a lot of excitement building in the hall, a lot of speculation, but as we know, uh, tomorrow uh, and later on this evening uh, we'll tell a tale and it's too early to start predicting yet who's going to win and who's going to lose. Uh, Mark McSharry came in there and got a great reception all right when he came in and uh, his supporters are obviously uh, jubilant and very happy with the way the thing is going. But all I know is that we're watching the trends on social media and we're watching the, um, the tally sites as well and the tally sites still are getting an awful lot of hits. A lot of people are still looking at the vote, yeah. still wondering where they went. So it's all to play for because you have to look at where people voted and all those people that are going to be eliminated, where they picked up their votes because that will tell you a good indication where the votes will go to when they've been transferred. Yeah. Okay. Um, somebody said earlier, it's like it's like. Oh, but this is where the whole fun of the count comes in. This is the crowds and the families coming in and the excitement and the drama and it's celebration for some, heartbreak for others, and that's well, all part of it. Uh, we were talking about this uh, during the day, and I really think now that anybody who's brave enough to put their name in front of the people deserves great credit, and it's by putting your name in front of people that you can highlight the relevance of an issue and PR lets people uh, vote on an issue and continue their preferences so it's a really fantastic system and that the, the, the excitement is building here it's absolutely electric here at the moment yeah okay Pascal the other question I'm not sure Niall whether this came up in our debates earlier but I, I've been getting again anecdotal evidence from some of the people who were tallying this morning that there was a significant and surprising number of people who despite the length of the ballot paper of 18 yeah. candidates actually voted down the paper. Absolutely. You found that point. Absolutely. Now, absolutely. that's a significant, significant point in the context of our debate about the transfers. And I, I, what I love to see, and we'd see this uh, this evening later on, and we'd see it uh, tomorrow again, you'll see a eight, a nine, a ten, I mean, every bit is valuable a vote later on. Become a number one. Oh, it becomes, it becomes a kingmaker, so it does. And, and, and further, because this was a big paper and people did vote the lines so they did because they wanted to make sure that their voice was heard so it, 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 the PR system is just actually my father uh, used to say that in order for PR to work effectively that voters should vote the paper absolutely we, work effectively. We, we, when I was uh, a gossip we were taught always to vote the, uh, vote the paper yeah. and, and, and it, it, that's what makes it that you can have a say right till the end ok I'm going to bring in uh, Finbar Filan uh, we're still waiting for the first count Finbar come and, come and join us another of the candidates uh, renewal candidate first time out Finbar thanks for joining us just stick on your, your headphones there well, your reaction, Finbar, thanks for joining us. Uh, your reaction to the day? You've been here for a few hours now, I think. It's a whole learning experience for me, and I've really enjoyed it. Um, disappointed with the result. I thought we'd do a bit better than that. But for a first-time candidate out in a national election, it's respectable. Um, the team were happy that we, we, we didn't flop all together. Yeah. But 870-odd um, votes, something like that, is what we're going to end up with. So, yeah. not bad for a first time out. Yeah. Um, in hindsight, how did you find the campaign? Was it a learning experience for you? Did you enjoy it? Was it tough work? Was it It's tough firing? work. Um, it's a huge constituency and it was a, a massive job to get around. We'd only a very small team and we'd no funding, so we're up against the machines and that's what came, uh, came against us. But I really, really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed getting out and meeting the people and understanding what's going on out there and I'm much more well equipped now for the next time around when the council elections come. Okay, and that, that's your goal now, is it, uh, council elections? Uh, Niall, realistically, if a council election had came first, it would have suited a new full yeah. stop. Um, we have a lot of very good people who wanted to do something different and make a change, but to be jumped in at the deep end in a general election was a, a huge ask. But we'll see now what happens over the next couple of days and we'll have a look at the You've been bitten by the bug though, you have somewhat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ask him. About, I just wanted to ask about Renewa. I just wanted to ask about Renewa. Um, I, 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 like most of us here, have been out of the national picture, but I understand that it hasn't been a good day. No, not a good day. Um, I haven't heard this 
Uh, I understand Lucinda Creighton. Lucinda is under pressure. Under pressure. I don't know tomorrow. Terence Lanigan. I think Terence is gone. Gone. And Billy is under pressure as well. Uh, Billy, and the strange thing is, I, I've known Terence Lanigan particularly well. Uh, he's got Roscommon connections. Yeah. That's where his people came from. And um, I, I felt, I always felt, I know that this isn't necessarily directed at, at you and Renua, but uh, looking back on it, I think Fine Gael made a dreadful, dreadful mistake in, in firing all those good conscientious people. But it did create that space that Lucinda and Terence and Biddy yeah. have created that well, allowed you to put forward your platform. But I'm just wondering, where, where are you going to go from here without that national platform? And as you said, without the funding that you yeah, have. It, like the Greens very suffered very from yeah. that too. Yeah. Sure it's, it's very, very hard. Um, we just have to regroup and see if the people want to continue and if they want to drive on and start again, as I said, at the grassroots and start at the local elections and try and build something that way. Um, but it was interesting, kind of following on what you're saying there, Pascal, I was just looking at the Fianna Gael votes and the Fianna Fáil votes during the day and I did quite well in the Fianna Fáil votes and then in the Fianna Gael votes I did terrible. So there really seems to be a, an anti-renewal bias coming from the whole Fianna Gael party. Oh um, I say that yeah. they really oh, resented. Oh no they really. I saw you was invading their yeah, space. Oh just get, getting in their space because I, I spent the afternoon walking around and just ha having a look at the different candidates and where the votes were going to see how I was getting on with threes and fours and I was really um, it's, it's an honour to look at these sheets and see that you're getting two, threes and fours and fives. That shows that people actually thought that you were able to stand up and to represent them. So I'm really privileged to have had that experience. Uh, some little crumb of comfort, uh, because I'm sure you've looked at the figures, but you are fourth uh, in terms of the, uh, the voting sequence. So you're going to be hoping to pick up votes from uh, Sweeney, from Thora, from Ohora, from O'Hara, from Murray, and also uh, before it comes near to you. So I know it may seem like prolonging the misery a little. Yeah, but we might but get again, to a thousand. Yeah, but I'm just thinking, uh, how significant might that be for you in light of the comments you're making, that if you did start building uh, some sort of transfer pattern here, small and all as it may be, but rather than, say, getting none yeah. or little, yeah. a few. Yeah, look at, at, at this stage, you know, anything else would be a bonus for me at this stage. Uh, as I said, it's been an honour to be naturally able to take part in a national election. So few people get to do it. Um, and it's only when you do it to realise how brave you have to be to do it, to put your head above the parapet and to let, let the people try vote for you and select you. So uh, I'm, I'm delighted that I've done it, I'm honoured to have done it. And um, it would be good if we got to a thousand, that would be just a nice milestone. But it's, that's going to be a psychological... Ah, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It'd be a, you know, then we'd have two of those 500 numbers out there. So, but it could happen because, going back to our general discussion about the transfer of pattern in Sligo, you're right in the heart of it. The people that are going to be eliminated before you are also right in the heart of yeah. Sligo as yeah. a barn. So uh, it'll be, a, it'll be a, a literal little side issue uh, in, and how important it would be for a small fledgling party as well. Uh, and as you say, in terms of maybe building into the future. Uh, if, yeah. if you're showing that maybe if people didn't give you the first preference, but they thought you were worthy enough of doing the second, the third, well, or the fourth. I spent a lot of time looking at the, the, the boats How did it look? I'm amazed with the number, the amount of number two, threes, and fours I've got. Oh, that's interesting. And, and I, I think that when I talk to people on the street, oh yeah, we'll give you a stroke. Yeah. I don't think they realise that to make it work, you have to give the number one. Yeah. Because you have to get into the race first. Yeah. Uh, the twos and threes are no good at no, that. Right, sure. Well, you've, you've been very uh, involved, as we know, in the... Um, in raising the profile of business in Sligo and, and the business improvement district bid and so forth but local elections I know it's a long way away but it's something you might be interested in it's Down the line we, yeah. we, I do need to concentrate now on the bid for the next couple of years yeah. and uh, actually uh, I can tell you now now that the business group we nominated the Sligo County Council to the ATCM Awards in the UK it's the Association of Town City Managers and they've been shortlisted now in the top three for helping to create a sustainable town centre in the British Isles. So it's a great honour and they're the only council in Ireland to be nominated. Um, the 8th of March we were in Westminster Hall to see if we win it. But that just shows how things are changing in Sligo and how we are moving forward. Um, we have to look positive, we have to look positive in the town and I've always said that. 
as I say, as you said earlier, Pascal, you'd agree with me, it's a very, very brave person to put yeah. their name on the ballot paper. As particularly for someone with a, a new brand that they're trying to uh, be identified with the electorate, uh, yeah. particularly in the traditional of voting patterns of this country, absolutely. I yeah. Finbar, many thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, Best of luck, enjoy the, the rest Best of the day. Thank you, take care. John Finbar Fylan there of the Renewal Party. Okay, still waiting on that first count, and judging by the amount of people in the hotel at the moment, uh, we shouldn't be too far away. John? Yes, well, that's quite interesting there on that. On that. May I first uh, say hello to Alwyn Love, who's got two laptops in the United States tuned in to us there, so hello Alvin. And of course Alvin, Al Alvin was in, in the, uh, in the, in the um, 2011 election. Correct, as an independent, uh, having previously stood for the Labour Party in the local elections. Now, some people, uh, Kevin, have been looking for the Balamehan votes for yeah, quite some next, time. So if I may, Niall, I'll give them the Balamehan votes now. Sure, yeah. Somebody said it was Ross Inver, but it's very close. It's actually taken in Glenanif and uh, Balamehan, it's called. Bree, eight. Four for Casserly. Phelan, two. Gallagher, two. Guckian, seven. Kenny, 71. McManus, 5. McSharry, 26. McLaughlin, 14. Murray, 4. O'Hara, 2. O'Hora, 3. O'Keefe, 5. O'Rourke, 34. Perry, 1. Reynolds, 39. Scanlon, 15. And Sweeney, 0. So I don't know, Kevin, have you any more that you wish to give on that? Somebody asked earlier for Manor Hamilton. We have a number of booths in Manor Hamilton, three in fact. So while... We did, we did Manor Hamilton earlier, John, did with, with Marion. Yeah, we did Manor Hamilton. Um, there was a couple more queries. Francie has just gone away from the desk for a moment. We, we'll check with him in relation to that. A Balamehan we've done, isn't that right? Correct, yes. yes. Okay. We don't have okay. anything, anyone else looking. If we have, uh, we have well, we'll, we'll wait till Francie comes back and we'll see what, what, uh, what boxes people are looking for. Okay, just to repeat um, again, we're still waiting on this first count from Sligo Leitrim from the Clarion Hotel. It's now 10 to 8. The uh, count isn't going to finish today. It's going to go well into tomorrow. We heard earlier uh, a prediction from one gentleman who suggested that uh, Mark McSharry would be elected probably mid-afternoon tomorrow and perhaps that the final three candidates would all be elected in the final count without reaching the quota. Now, it's a big stretch to go to that stage, I know. Uh, John, but that is possible. It is well, that's, possible. A, yeah. that's quite possible. I don't expect okay. I don't expect any candidate to be elected uh, if, if we just if we just look at our figures. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six eliminations up to uh, O'Hara, and there are only less than three thousand votes there. So, given the possibility that all those six thousand, all those three thousand votes went to McSharry, he still won't be elected. So, it's going to be much later, much later tomorrow afternoon before McSharry is elected. Okay, I, I'd advise anybody. Uh, so I'd advise anybody uh, just to, we should tune in online. Some great pictures happening at the moment in the count centre. There are a lot of um, the, the, Mac, the McSharry, the McSharry clan. Uh, Ray McSharry is here. We'll be talking with Ray in just one second, and uh, Mark is here. Here, and uh, Councillor Tom McSharry is here, and uh, the extended family. As we were saying, the Pascal, it's, uh, it's, I suppose, it's reminiscent Pascal of many elections gone by when you see the the McSharry crew in Absolutely. celebrating oh, no question, many yeah. of the elections that you were involved in. Yes, in yeah, fact, down the more than you too. No, before my time, believe it or not. Was it before, was, uh, before my time, slightly. Yeah. But anyway. Well, I was sort of family involved. Yeah, back in, back in the 70s, of and, course. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can remember Ray for the first time coming into Leitrim, yeah. having been nominated as a Unified candidate in 69, okay. which was really my first sort of yeah, second active, active yeah. election. Some great pictures coming on. People should 
just um, go onto our website oceanfm.ie or you can access it on Ocean FM Ireland on Twitter or Facebook hashtag Sligo Leitrim but um, certainly worth watching if you haven't been watching up until now uh, some great excitement in the count centre as we wait the first count uh, Ray McSherry will join us in a moment he's just um, quite busy at the, at the press. sorry Jerry John yeah. Yeah. okay well we're joined by, by Ray McSherry I know you're you're much in demand area I, I know and we're sorry we're just saying to Pascal it's, it's like old times yeah um, they were good old days, there's no doubt about it. When you see Mac Sherry celebrating uh, as a group like that. Um. Yes, well, I mean, I must say that uh, as far as the Mac Sherry family is concerned from the 60s, that they have been uh, politicos. They didn't cause anybody any difficulty, but during elections, they just go quiet. But come an election, they came together like glue. Where am I going? What I have to do? along with the local Fianna Fáil organisation and our supporters. So it was a tremendous team, great director of election in Edel McSherry and all of the family, cousins. One example I always give, when my father died in 1987, he had 43 grandchildren. There's still 42 of them alive and none of them are too far away from where we're sitting now yeah, well, and all right. available. All have been married since, all have children and grandchildren. So, And, th and that's very important, okay. It's of fundamental importance because each of them have their own friends. But the main thing about it is that they go and meet the organisation on the ground. There's no point in going anywhere unless you have the intelligence on the ground. Where there are even two or three people is enough. They know every neighbour, they know what's happening in the area. They're great for Mark if he gets elected that they'll bring the problems of that area to him so that he's aware of them and see can he do anything to help with them. Okay, as we said to Mark earlier, it's a bit, it's a bit premature to be offering congratulations but he must be incredibly proud of him. Well, Stephen. It looks like he's going to head the poll, so I'm obviously incredibly proud. Uh, nobody is elected until the returning officer comes out and says it, so we wouldn't be celebrating or congratulating anybody. But I do congratulate Mark for the work he put in. I do congratulate the family, the support that he had, and I do congratulate the workers who went out. We had anything from 150 to 200 people out for the last three weeks, yeah. working day and daily to see and get the message out. Yeah, and we could see that. It was very evident, particularly on social media, I have to say, and many people commented on it, including many of the candidates. Um, was that the difference? Mark talk, talked about the, the, the work that he put in, the, the grind that he put in in the last five years. And it's, it's not always uh, pretty and it's not always uh, glamorous, but the work has to be done. What, what's the, as we say, he, he's going to almost double his vote. What, what's been the difference, do you think? Well, well the difference the is, I, I have to say that this election was fought on the basis of what happened in 211. The outgoing government were talking about driving a bus over a cliff and Fianna Fáil did it. That happened five years ago. Fianna Fáil apologised for that and Fianna Fáil paid the price in the 211 election, losing 50 seats. So that election was over. The people knew that and they were a bit fed up listening to it. Fianna Fáil in its own way had been rebuilding, had been working like Mark, doing the same as if he was a TD or a minister, working on behalf of people, highlighting problems that interested the people. Because this was an election. Problems about what the people have is what they want listened to, heard and acted upon. Nobody can solve all the problems tomorrow or the next year. No government can. But as long as people know that when their problem is brought to the attention of the representative and that it is aired, and as Mark says himself, that you're prepared to fight their corner, that's what people want. If I was to put one thing on Fianna Fáil in the last election, was that they ran away instead of standing and fighting. If there was 10 or 11 people who fought the election the last time, instead of having 20, we would have had 30 seats. Okay. And we wouldn't have been in the difficult position that we were coming into this election. Okay. And did you ever buy into the notion that Fianna Fáil were finished back in 2011? No, I didn't. Was, you never believed it? Never believed it. Even because in the Fianna Fáil days. couldn't be finished. You see, people don't know Fianna Fáil. It's around for 80-something years. 
it has made a major contribution to the development of this country. No matter what they talk, and no matter how they try and bring up sleaze and nonsense like that, that of course a, a number of our people, a minute number of our people were involved in. The greatest majority of Fianna Fáil were hard-working, ordinary people of Ireland wanting to see the opportunity to live and work in their own areas. We have a situation now where the country is the pale, the old English pale. All the investment is going in there. The people have to work there. There's no houses for the people there. And we have the west of Ireland dying day and daily in towns and villages with businesses closing up. That has to be reversed. We've got to get back to the basic assets that we have. Agriculture, added value. There's no question about that. Tourism and the potential that there is there, as well as getting whatever investment we can. But we've got to fight for our share. And for the last number of years, including the previous Fianna Fáil government, we were not getting our share here. From now on, no matter who the government is, one thing, our deputies, we'll be asking them, whoever the four are, I'll be asking them, all of them here tonight, to get together and work for this area and get their share of whatever the national cake is. It's, it's quite obvious you're as passionate now, Raymond Cherry, as you, as you were when you were a TD, when you were a minister, when you were a European Commissioner. Well, I well, spent... Why, why is that? I spent 30 of the best years of my life. I worked for 15 years before I went into politics. I was 30 years in public life at the highest level and the lowest level. And I'm working for the last 15 years in the private sector where I started. So I have a good broad experience of both sides of the political and business divide. And I know what people think. And I try to see can we help them to resolve their problems. Because that's what public representation is about. I was never a politician. I called myself all my life a public representative. And when I went to Europe and dealing with major problems world stage, people asked me, how can you come from dealing on Sligo Corporation to dealing with the general agreement yeah. on tariff and trade covering 141 countries and the problems that exist in the European countries because the problems were the same for the people I represented on Sligo Corporation that I represented 15 countries on, on in Brussels. Scale. They're know, the same problems all over. Okay, I know Pascal wants to say a word for you, maybe Marion as well. Pa um, Tip O'Neill famously said that all politics is local race. So can I go back to the local situation here? Yes. Um, and I just want to bring you back to your first election in 69 in which my late father and yourself are on the ticket along with, um, I think, Eugene Goodbride, as far as I know. And um, uh, at that time, the question was being asked in Sligo as to where the Rooney transfers and which were going to go. Now, the question has arisen again, this time with Paddy O'Rourke. Have you any insight, or have you any opinion on what you think might happen? Because it's going to be critical for the possibility of Fianna Fáil taking two seats. I agree with you, Pascal, completely. And Lord rest Joe Mooney, he gave us great service. And I was honoured to be on the ticket with him on a few occasions. And we worked extremely well. Joe always knew that what he was doing was gathering up the Fianna Fáil vote. He didn't give himself, because of the part of Leitrim, mid Leitrim that was in us at the time, that there wasn't the greatest opportunity to get the number of votes. But he always made sure. And it was difficult, very difficult, because my father was a Leitrim man. And he put his hand on his heart going out to vote for me, because he said, it's the first time I voted for a Sligo man. I always gave me number one to Leitrim. And that's the way the Leitrim people are. They vote Leitrim. Joe Mooney always ensured that there was going to be a Fianna Fáil transfer to his candidates here, which was Gallagher and myself, Lord Rest yeah. James and, and Joe. And it was his transfers that elected me to the okay. Dáil on the first time. But having said that, there is no doubt in my mind that if Leitrim candidates go out, there will be a lot of transfers to the existing ongoing yeah. Leitrim candidates. Okay. Marion, do you want to, to say something to Ray? Well, I mean, obviously there's great you delight and, and as you say, Ray, it's, it's premature for celebration yet, but I mean, Mark is, is topping the poll and, um, you know, I was talking to Marie Casserly earlier and you got to work hard, you got to go out there, yeah. people have to know you, you've got to get the work done. 
both come in once and they're hard got and, and well done to Mark. Um, it's a great, great night for him and a great celebration for his family and for Ray in particular to see his son doing so well. So, I mean, well done on that. The other three seats, still up for grabs. Yeah. We, we just don't know what's going to go. Oh, I just got a, a, a text in, Alan Shattergon, big names falling all over the place yeah. tonight. But here in Sligo Leitrim, the story is, uh, for now, Mark topping the pole and still wondering how the cookie is going to crumble. But well done, well done to everybody. Okay. Could I just well, let me, let, could I say just to Mary, yeah. because it's the first time I was ever on a debate with her, okay. or on a platform, that we're proud to be married. Oh, thank you. You're there as an independent. You followed in my footsteps as a TD MEP, and you're doing a great job, and keep it up. I was going to ask, no, no, you're okay, sorry, Ray, I'll write you, sir, and I endorse everything I said about Marion. I was going to ask you about the Sligo situation. We've estimated that there's roughly about 8,000 uh, votes that would be transferred, yeah. primarily within Sligo Town and its environs. Now, of all the areas in the constituency, you know Sligo Town best of all. Yeah. Have you got any insights or any opinion as to how you think those transfers are going to be distributed, considering that we believe, and I think you'll accept, that nobody is going to be elected on the first count, or maybe even the second or third count? Well, with the results, like, I mean, we see independence or so with 19%. Yeah. If they all, which they won't, were to roll on, they would be fighting for the last seat. But they're not, because there's left independence, there's right independence, mm -hmm. there's centre independence. But there's no doubt about it that all candidates, particularly in Sligo, are going to gain most out of the transfers, the transfers that will okay. come. All right. And there is a possibility that uh, McManus will go beyond Kenny. Mm -hmm. In the yeah, after we, the transfers, yeah, and we, that's a big question as to who goes out first. Okay. Have you any any uh, insight into what you think may happen in what is another little mini contest between John Perry and Eamon Scanlon, on the basis that John Perry, unfortunately for him and his family, as we said earlier, may now have to uh, bow to the inevitable. Yeah. So there's four and a half thousand votes there. Where do you think they might go? Well, there's the no doubt about it that 40. Eamon will get a number of votes from John Perry. Eamon will get votes as a slight man from McManus if he happened to go out. He will get votes from Kenny. He will get votes from uh, O'Rourke if it's O'Rourke that is going to go out. Like, there are so many imponderables with 8,000 yeah. votes still to be transferred. It's I right. wouldn't call it between the people who are all there between five and a half and six and a half thousand. Yeah. And and until after you have, we said, those 8,000 votes transferred, there's no doubt in my mind, and I won't name the people, yeah. but Fianna Fáil will have one seat, Fianna Gael will have one seat, Sinn Féin will have one seat, and there's a battle between Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil for the last seat. Yeah. Well, all we right. can tell you we've already agreed that Barclay yeah. Shari is going to be one of the Fianna Fáil seats. Oh, you're very good. Thanks very, very much. <laughs> just before we go, Ray, very quick, uh, John Comiskey just wanted to make, uh, make no, a comment. Just, Ray, I'm very good, and congratulations to the McSharry family. I'm going to switch a little bit from politics, Ray, if you just notice, if you just notice here on my lanyard, here we have the IT logo and I think the IT of which you are chair of the governing yeah. body have played a huge important part in bringing the coverage to the people and it's its own mini industry here in the constituency of Sligo Leitrim and I think that's something to be reckoned and I think you'll agree Ray that we are getting our youth and our general population involved and interested in politics. Yeah, there's no doubt about that and I'm delighted to be with you again and it's a long time since we were first talking but as it happens tomorrow I will officially retire from everything I will be a retired individual for the first time from after everything. 60 years working because my time is up on the 28th which is tomorrow as chairman of the Institute of Technology I went back for five years when asked by the previous government because the technological universities were coming to Ireland there was none north of the line from Dublin to Galway. And it's about time the people in Dublin, whoever they are, Fianna Fáil or Fianna Gael, remembered 
that this part of the world exists too. And they're talking about uniting Ireland and the six counties. And they're giving no investment in here. Anyway, we came back, we got together with GMIT and with Letterkenny. And we now have the Connacht Ulster Alliance. And we're in stage two of that process to have a technological university here, which has provided our ITs in the country, have provided the workforce that led to the progress in this economy over the last 20 years. Of course we have had a hiccup. There's been world disorder for the last four or five years, and maybe a bit more down the road in the not too distant future. But nevertheless, we have had made progr made great progress, and what we want to do is to play our part and have tourism developed and agricultural developed where there's great potential, but at the same time get the inward investment or our share of it that's coming in to the pale, the old English pale. Okay. We, yes. we, we, we better let Ray go because I know his family but are anxious. Just before he goes, can we just have one quick thing? I think it, we have to compliment Parik Hart, Edmund yeah. Gray, the leadership shown to us in the college by allowing us to process this technological use of the technology yeah. that we have today, and could we also send best wishes to Professor Vincent Cunyan uh, at the moment, I'm sure, Ray, and we wish Ray, and we thank him for everything he has done in his time as chairperson of the governing body. It's that leadership that have left the IT as the icon it is today. Well, thank you very much, and I'd like to pay tribute to Porik Hart and his team. He's one of the best lecturers we have. He's brought our students from here in the Northwest to the top of the world in many of the areas of innovation and research. Okay. So we wish him congratulations, and to Vincent Cunyan, who has done Trojan work here. He's recovering well. We'll probably be back at work in the next 10 days to a okay. Ray McSherry, you know you're busy and in demand, and I'll let you get back to, to Mark and, and the family to await the first count. And many thanks for joining us this evening. Thank you. But the last thing I'm going to say is we don't know where we'd be without Ocean FM. Oh, well. They are doing a brilliant job today in what you're doing. Like there would be thousands more at this count, but they don't have to. They're seeing it on the minute coming from you. And not only for this count, but every day. Okay. Well, we appreciate the comments, really do. Many thanks for joining us. Uh, that's Ray McSharry. Very, very interesting comments, I think. Uh, and very interesting insight. Uh, and you can, as you can hear, the, the passion is still there, even after all these years in politics. That's Ray McSharry, who... Quite obviously and understandably he's a very, very proud man this evening because his son um, will be elected at uh, some stage uh, tomorrow. Okay, just to let people, well I think maybe we'll take a quick break Kevin because it's just past 8 o'clock. Uh, you're not going to miss anything here, we're going to be back live for the first count. You won't miss anything, stay tuned, stay listening, um, stay watching online and I think it's probably more relevant now Francis isn't it? Uh, to watch online now because this is where it gets very graphic and people might like to see the pictures from the count and how it works and all that so online oceanfm.ie on twitter and on facebook oceanfm ireland hashtag sligolito is the hashtag join us again in a few moments from the clarion hotel
Nathan Kenny is our next Faden Councillor, Leitrim Councillor, and um, obviously a candidate here this evening as well. Martin, I was just saying you were here before I was this morning, so yeah. you, you had a very early start. I yeah, I was here with half eight. You were the first candidate. It's unusual for a candidate to be at the council early. But I wouldn't be able to sleep anyway. Would you not? No. <laughs> no, no. I'd be, I'd be on edge at home trying to see what's going on, and so I'll yeah. well be here looking at it. Well, what do you make of it? Obviously, you, you polled very well according polled very to well, tallies. Ten yeah. percent of the first yeah. preferences. Um, how, how I mean, we're, how? it's going to be very close. I mean, obviously, Ray, I was going to say Ray McSharry. Mark McSharry has, has clearly is going to take the first seat. That's what's going to happen, and we expected that. Um, after that, then, I think uh, Tony McLaughlin is going to get enough transfers for to take a seat. And the last two seats, I think there's going to be three of us there. There's going to be myself, Jerry Reynolds, and Eamon Scanlon. And, uh, you know, how it goes, it's going to be down, I suppose, to a couple of hundred votes, and it's down to transfers. Um, you know, but it's, that's, that's the way elections work, and we have to just, uh, I suppose, try and... It's tense for those of us that are here, but we have to, we have to put up with it, and, and hopefully that it, it all works out. And there's, there has to be winners, there has to be losers, but you, you, okay. meet, you meet both with the same attitude, you know? All right, and, and the Chris McManus, Martin Kenny situation, do you want to... Well, yeah, well, I mean, we've, we've, we, we both uh, cooperated very well. We divided the constituency. Chris had, had uh, uh, South Donegal and Sligo. I had West Cavan and Leitrim. And, you know, we didn't poach votes off each other. We didn't come in and canvas on each other's area. We respected it. We worked very well together. And if we looked at the twos that going to Chris and the twos that Chris is sending to me and in both cases we're probably looking at a, over a 50% or maybe a 60% transfer rate so you know we're yeah, very yeah. happy with that we've cooperated and worked very well in You're that respect so. Okay. so I'd be confident at this stage it looks like you know well, there's a good few candidates to go out in Sligo it will probably put Chris well up there um, certainly when Declan Bree goes out he'll transfer well to Chris and that will probably put Chris neck and neck with me or maybe slightly ahead of me after that then you're looking at probably Paddy O'Rourke going out after that Paddy's transfer rate they'll go a fair shake of them will come my way he's in the next parish so you know that should put me right up there I'd say a good good few votes ahead of Chris right. and then when Chris goes out I expect it to give me enough votes to come within I suppose staggered in distance of the quota. Oh, you're, very, you're very confident. And, uh, well, I wouldn't say confident here, but yeah. I'm just, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm no, hopeful. and, and you're, 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 you're right to be hopeful. It's just that we were talking to our panellists earlier on, and they were saying, you know, it's, it's touch and go between is, Kenny, yeah. Kenny and McManus for the Sinn Féin seat, no? Uh, I don't think so now at this stage. I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, and I've, I've spoken to Chris about it, like, and we've, you know, we're a sort of both sort of agreeing that that's, that's how we expect it to work out, you know? Yeah. Okay, that's it. Marion, you're nodding your head, are you? I just, I've spoken to a few people, and uh, the last time we looked at Susan O'Keefe's vote, yeah. which transferred quite well to Calreevy, but it's a much smaller vote this time, and not as much would go to Chris McManus, not percentage-wise. And equally, I uh, spoke with a few people about Declan Bree's vote, and again, not in the numbers I think he needs to uh, overtake Martin. Yeah. But I want to ask Martin a question. Sure, yeah, work away. If you get elected, and, and that's what we're presenting, Zooming at the moment, or uh, how will that affect Jerry Reynolds? Do you think that that might be a problem for Reynolds? Uh, I, I don't honestly know. I, I think you know. Obviously, Jerry Reynolds pulled very well throughout the whole length of the constituency, Arian, and, and mm. he has he has done excellent. But I mean, it, it's as I said, the last the last two seats, there's going to be three people there, and I, I'm not sure where it is. I mean. From, from Leitrim's perspective, certainly to take two, two seats in Leitrim in a constituency which is, I suppose, such a small proportion of the vote coming from County Leitrim would be a, a, a real turn up for the books. But um, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, because the question is, if you, if you were to be eliminated, and it doesn't look as if that's going to happen, it looks as if you'll be elected, uh, Reynolds would have had an, you know, an opportunity to get a swathe of votes there, but um, I know he will get transfers, obviously, from the Sligo candidate, but it's going to be very tight. But I think if you're elected, it may be likely that you'll be the Leitrim TD and that the other three might be in Sligo. Maybe that's the way it will fall. But it, 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 it looks that way, but it's certainly, at this stage, it's not impossible. We could see no, two no. TDs in each county. You know, okay. it, it is possible that could happen. It's okay. possible, but maybe not. May, maybe not. And, and, you know, we can't. We certainly, I wouldn't rule out him and Scanlon. You know, he is, no, no. He is going to get transfers from all over the place. And I, I noticed, because we looked at the number two coming from Paddy O'Rourke, like, and 
uh, I think almost 30% of them on the sample we looked at were going to McSharry. About 20% of them were going to Jerry Reynolds, and about 25% for myself, 25% for for Eamon Scanlon. You know, so like it's 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 neck and neck there as to where it's going. And it's all very tight, and I suppose it's an unusual election in that we are all so close yeah. at the end of it. Okay, uh, maybe I'll ask Matthew about that. You you would have missed what Martin said earlier. Martin, Sadly, I did. He's, uh, yeah, he's. I don't know if bullish is the right word, but um, he's, he's pretty he's pretty confident that he he um, in in the Sinn Féin battle, if that's what you want to call it, that he that he will edge Chris McMahon. Which you'd have to be, wouldn't you, Mark? Of course, yes. I mean, you'd have to be. Uh, but I mean, the reality, as I see it, there's eight thousand plus transfers into Sligo, yeah. and uh, you're going to be relying on the elimination of Paddy O'Rourke. Yes. So um, that's the challenge, and I'm not speculating on the outcome of that. Okay. I'm just making, as we have all day, said there is this corpus of votes in Sligo, particularly in Sligo Town, that are left-wing and anti-government. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're they're not they're not pro-government. They're anti-government, yeah. and they will they will vote uh, accordingly uh, on their second, third, fourth, and fifth preferences. Okay. So I, I still think it's a challenge for you, Mark. To be honest, I think it's a challenge. Yeah. Well, but I, you're you're in the game, big I'm time. Certainly, Absolutely. Certainly there's no game. question of you not. But yeah. well, I'm only just we're all curious to yeah, know are, what's yeah. going to happen these transfers. And okay. if you have any insight into that, please tell us. Okay. So we'll be happy to. And of course, from a Leitrim perspective, the more TDs there are in the county, from a centric point of view, the absolutely. better. Yes. Uh, Martin, just a quick word before we let you go about Sinn Féin nationally. Um, what are you hearing back? Well, I haven't heard very much. I haven't had a chance to listen to, to yeah. the radio or, or watch any television or anything like that. I'm too close to what's going on here. But you know, from what I, from what I, sort of on the grapevine, you know, some places it's going well, some places it's not going well. But I mean, no, that's that's elections for you, and I suppose we just have to have to work it out. Okay. Well, I was no, just no, looking there not to ask you questions here. Go no, ahead. no, I was just looking at. Uh, uh, TV there uh, a little earlier for Brian Stanley because uh, yep. it's a huge vote in uh, Leash. In Leash, yes. yes. Marion. Sorry, Marion. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Have you heard anything about um, Johnny Gall? I mean, Pierce is obviously going to take a seat. Parik McLaughlin. Have you heard anything about that? I, the last I heard was that it looked like Parik was also going to take the seat. I see. But it's very, very tight. Very tight. And, yeah. and how do you, how tight is it? Do you know? Oh, uh, it will be down to a few hundred votes. Mm. Okay. Martin Kelly, many thanks for joining us. Thank you very um, much. We'll be talking to you, no doubt, uh, throughout the weekend. Best of luck. It's been a long day for you, and thanks yeah. for joining us. Thank you very much. No problem. That's uh, Martin Kelly, who, of course, is uh, well in the hunt, and maybe more for a seat here in Sligo Leitrim. Uh, Martin, of course, who came desperately close previously in Roscommon, South Leitrim. OK, half past eight, I'm told, is the, the first count, which is about 12 minutes away. Half past eight. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, Pascal. Would you would you share just? Uh, you're uh, you're sitting there as the moderator, so yeah. um, uh, I won't ask Marion this question. I'll ask you this question. What did you question. think of that, though? Oh, considering well, all of, considering all of our discussions and debates earlier, and I I mean I had to be honest yeah. about the no, transfer. I, 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 I thought Martin was supremely confident, I and mean, I could personally think from what you're saying and from what I'm looking at is that um, I don't know if he should be that confident. Yeah, it's a challenge. He has a yeah. challenge. Would you? Sorry, I just spoke to some people about, you know, where Susan O'Keefe's vote is going and where Declan Green's vote is going. And, and for those two at least, I don't think they're going in just sufficient numbers okay. for Chris to, to overtake Kenny once um, the Fianna Fáil vote uh, is, or Rob's vote is distributed. But look, it's, it's hard to tell. What are they saying? What I heard was that... Uh, O'Keefe spoke the last time, quite a bit went to Colreevy, but that is not happening this time. It's more of a government vote, and it's it's going more to, okay. to Fine Gael. Okay. And Bree's vote, you know, somebody's just one, two, three. Uh, Bree, people before profit, and, and I forget whoever, the, the third person. Stopping there. So it's, you know, there want to be a substantial transfer there uh, to McManus. So I, I'm not saying there so, won't be. So does it then raise the question, uh, Marion, that there could be non transferable significant number of non-transferables because the people with respect to them who are voting would have been saying a plague on all your houses, we're not going to uh, give any preferences to the mainstream parties, so we're, we will stop at number three or number four. Well there was a certain number of those votes so I'm told now, uh, all this is second hand That could be, that could be a game changer Niall Yeah because say. again, you have to look where will Chris get the votes so uh, I'm not saying he won't get them and he may do but it's going to be awful tight 
and, and Kenny is ahead, and you know, when you're ahead... When you're ahead, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I think we may have a count here. Good. Well, we have the uh, we have the classic empty podium. Yes. And then we'll have people wandering by, and every time somebody comes up and stands on the podium, there'll yep. be a hush. And uh, five minutes. Thanks for thanks for that. Very good. We're getting there. We're getting there. Fifteen, 15 minutes. Oh, and, and, and thanks I, to our good friend Tommy Gorman. I thought as much. Because I, Tommy will know. Yes. <laughs> well, it was Tommy that gave me the earlier yeah, information. And, uh, I, mean, I mean, obviously, um, counts don't happen until the RT cameras That's are true. ready to go. Um, so 15 minutes. Oh. Oh. Okay, we'll just listen to what Porik has to say. 111. 95911. The total poll, 62,895. 62895. Invalid ballot papers, 560. The valid poll, 62,335. Number of seats to be filled, 4. Quota, 12468. 12,468. The following is the result of count one. Bree, Declan, 3,250. 3,250. Casserly, Mary, non-party, 2,726. Phylan, Finbar, Rhianua, Ireland, 881. 881. Gallagher, Nigel, Anti Austerity Alliance, People Before Profit, 1768. 1768. Guckian, Des, Non Party, 1060. 1060. Kenny Martin, Sinn Fein, 6356. 6356 McManus Chris Sinn Fein 4747 4747 McSharry Mark Fina Fall 8856 8856 McLaughlin Tony Fine Gale 6172 6172 Murray Eamon, non party, 356, 356. O'Hara Burney, non party, 1206, 1206. O'Hora, Leslie V. John, Green Party, Coenthus Glass, 603, 603. O'Keefe Susan, the Labour Party. 1,829, 1,829. O'Rourke, Paddy, Fianna Fáil, 5,447, 5,447. Perry, John, Fine Gael, 4,403, 4,403. Reynolds, Gerard, Fine Gael, 6,672, 6,672. Scanlon Eamon, Fianna Fáil, 5,874, 5,874. Sweeney Bernard, non-party, 129, 129. No candidate has reached the quota on this count. As there is no surplus for transfer, I will now proceed to exclude the following lowest candidates and distribute their votes, because their total votes are less than the votes of the next lowest candidate. Their exclusion, separately, could not save any of their election expenses, which are not already saved. Sweeney, Bernard, 129 votes, and Murray, Eamon, 356 votes, and the next count will consist of the distribution of their votes. Thank you very much.
Okay, um, right. That's the, the first kind of apologies. We, we kind of misled you there, and it came upon us all of a sudden. We'll re we'll re read the we'll we'll read them out again in a moment. But it strikes me, Marion, as a pastor, that there's a couple of, of significant. They made a mess of the Sligo ta the Leitrim um, tally. Well, they got it wrong. I mean, there's there's a big difference in Paddy O'Rourke's vote and, and a big difference in Reynolds, Martin Kenny's vote. Yes, and Reynolds, and Jerry Reynolds, uh, and well, Re Reynolds less so, but certainly a big variance in the Very big. In, in Kenny and and O'Rourke. Yeah, and there is. Uh, Kenny's tally was six oh seven nine. It's yeah. six three five six, five, six which is yeah. nearly three hundred more. Yeah. And the same with O'Rourke. He yeah. was five. And seven four, he's five four four seven, and nearly in another two hundred and fifty. And Reynolds um, uh, was six five oh five, but he's in reality he got six six seven two, which is another hundred and fifty. So there was a bit of a yeah. slip there in the lead from tally. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. what, what does no. that mean of anything? Pat? Well, I think uh, first of all that it enhances Paddy O'Rourke's performance, and that he's hit nearly five and a half thousand. And if you consider that there was another fourteen hundred votes out of lead to the Sligo candidates, that puts that. Uh, Fianna Fáil voted around 7,000, which is very respectable, but it also uh, perhaps uh, reflects the uh, confidence that Martin Kenny had when he was with us earlier, and yeah. that maybe he knew more than we did, well, he obviously uh, did. because there, there's no doubt that that has made a difference uh, to our calculations, um, where he's on 6356, and um, uh, Chris McManus uh, didn't really uh, increase all that much on the tally, he's on 4747, so if you look at the difference in the two uh, between Kenny and McManus, uh, you're looking at uh, 1,500, around 15, 1,600 volts. Now, again, it goes back to the transfers, and as Marion and I were saying earlier, which perhaps is a dimension that we hadn't addressed, is that maybe those people who voted for, uh, let's say, the more left-wing parties, perhaps did what traditionally Sinn Féin used to do when they had the plumpers. They voted one and they left it at that. So maybe they didn't vote down the paper three, four, five, which is going to have an impact on Chris McManus's chances if, he's, if, if, if there's non-transferables yeah. and, and that the gap between himself and Kenny isn't closed. So that then raises fundamental questions. But as things stand, um, I think from Paddy O'Rourke's point of view, on 5447, the next Leitrim based candidate is um, Jerry, is, is sorry, is Martin Kenny, who is about uh, 900 votes ahead of him. Uh, it's agonising for Paddy O'Rourke, I have to say. 900 votes okay. behind Martin Kenny and only 1,200 votes behind Jerry Reynolds. Yes. Okay. And so I'm sure that there'll be all sorts of analysis saying, what ifs? And that's the problem about global elections for those okay. that don't make uh, it. Marianne, they start asking the what ifs. Yeah, Marion, uh, strengthens just Martin done, Kenny's position, you would feel that... I think that, so. Yeah. And I've just done a quick thought now. I could be wrong on this. But just looking at the percentage of the Fianna Fáil and the Fianna Gael vote, from these new figures, I see Fianna Fáil on a total of 32.4%, I hope I'm right, and Fine Gael on 27.7%. So that's just a, a very slight gain for Fianna Fáil, very slight, I'm not sure if it's a slippage for Fine Gael, but again, it, it all comes down to that second seat, and if we're looking at the guts of 5% between the parties in total, or 4.5%, I suppose, to be more accurate, it certainly, you know, weighs in on the possibility of that second Fianna Fáil seat. But, okay. long way to go. You, you're studying the figures as well, Noel, that first count? As, <coughs> sorry. I suppose the, the tally was a bit, uh, a bit off. Which yeah, is, quite, usually, quite a bit off in certain areas. As well. Yeah, usually a bit more accurate, particularly in Leitrim, but I suppose... You know, Jerry Rennes has gained 150 votes there, and John Perry and, and Tony McLaughlin has gained 100 votes each. Yeah. Um, Martin Kinney obviously has Kinney, gained almost, a lot. Almost 300 votes, and, and the same with O'Rourke. Yeah, yeah. So the Leitrim Telly obviously um, wasn't as accurate as yeah. the Sligo one. Um, look at this next count will tell us very very little very little and it'll be very quick as well isn't yeah it, right? yeah I mean this is a relatively small amount of votes to be distributed yeah. so okay it's John Kowalski um, you'd yes. the tallies are a little bit askew there in Leitrim and yes it's not that the Leitrim tallies are out or anything like that at all 
it's just that they appear to be out. The tallies were conducted by the same personnel. It's just that the Leitrim tally was the last to be tallied. And I will forgive our tally people who worked so hard. Oh, yeah. If tiredness was setting in a little bit, if their eyes were starting to fade a little bit, after five and a half hours of looking at the ballot paper. So please do not be able to blame them ah, for no, that. We'd never, we'd never do that. We'd, we'd, we'd never do that. Um, uh, well, I, again, you heard, I don't know if you heard Martin Kenny, he was extremely confident that he would, well, if there's a Sinn Féin seat there, which there obviously is, that he would be the one to get it, and, and maybe his confidence was based on those figures. Is that how you would see it? Yes, well, we were always confident that there's a Sinn Féin seat there, and we were always confident that it would probably be Martin Kenny. What we were surmising was that could McManus come and, and catch him. On these figures, on these figures here, it's amazing looking at tallies and looking at the first count, because there's a finality about the first count. And looking at the first count now on this here, it seems that realistically, Kenny is going to take the seat there, McSharry is going to take a seat. There is a seat for Fine Gael, which will probably be McLaughlin, and I'm bringing Scanlon very much so into the equation to fight back, given, given the fact that Paddy O'Rourke has 5,400 votes, mm -hmm. and I'm expecting that Paddy O'Rourke's transfers will stay broadly within the party. There has been a swing to Fianna Fáil, and I'm expecting that he is a far greater number, and singularly, for transferring. I think that's going to be a benefit to him and Scanlon. So Scanlon is very much back in the in the race there for that. Could I, could I intercede here, um, talking about the transfers in Sligo, we should also factor in that there's something like 2,800 uh, primarily, or not exclusively, Leitrim votes to be transferred. Des Guckin, independent, um, would have got the most significant share of his 1,060 votes in Leitrim. Not all, but most of them. Uh, Bernie O'Hara is a Leitrim-based candidate. Again, over 1,200 votes, a significant number of them, I would suggest, are, were, were out of Leitrim. I haven't, we, we need to perhaps maybe look at that figure. Uh, so I'm just saying that maybe that might make a bit of a change in the dynamics uh, between the three Leitrim-based candidates remaining. I don't know. Yes, I would say that O'Hara's vote came from over the constituency. I remember looking at her in the boxes, and while obviously in Killinumery and her own area she'll have done very well, I think her votes came everywhere if you look at it. Yeah. So I, I don't think that'll count. I think Des Guckian's will. Uh, he will have got more in Leitrim, obviously, than elsewhere. But he did get votes, you know, the one and two and three. And well, I'm just sorry, Barry, just to help yeah. here, and, and uh, perhaps I should have looked at this before I expressed the opinion. Des Guckian got 720, uh, uh, although that's a flawed figure figure now because his vote went up uh, went up one 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 10, by yeah. 10. Yeah. Well, around 720 he took out a Leitrim. Bernie O'Hara took uh, around 450. Yes. So there's uh, 7 and 5, that's 12. So there's uh, 800. And, 12, and then there's um, there's 100 and um, uh, O'Hara got 200. So there's around 14 to 1500 votes mm. yeah, to be distributed in the yeah. which is still significant enough in light of where the three are. J just to recap on that, um, I'm sorry I interrupted you, no, it's but fine. it was just in the context of the, the gap between the three Leitrim yeah. candidates. Um, with uh, Jerry Reynolds leading the field on 6672, Martin Kenny on 6356, who was about, what's that, 250 behind, 300 behind. And then Paddy O'Rourke is a further uh, 1,000, 1,200 behind, 1200 behind, Reynolds. behind Reynolds, and he is 900 behind Kenny. So it's a big gap for Paddy to have it to is. make up, yeah. despite that 1500, yeah, we, because we just, you need just, to get two thirds. just might, might repeat those figures. Oh, sorry, yes, John, you want to make a point? We'll repeat yes, the figures again. I, 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 took the, I, I made that point about the Leitrim vote, but more importantly, I think Pascal will agree with me on this here, is that of those votes that he was be just looking at there about the transfer, those 1,060 from Guckian are from predominantly uh, uh, Fianna Fáil gene pool within the Leitrim vote. So there's every possibility from that... Go from Guckian? From Guckian. I'm not sure I'd agree with that, John. Well, that, that would be my reading of it. So there's every possibility that O'Rourke could pass out Scanlon. 
Well, no, I, I, could I just maybe interject with an a counter-opinion, just for the sake of being the devil's advocate. Des Cookin was elected to Leitrim County Council in an area where Fine Gael's outgoing can councillor, John Ward, lost a seat. Mm -hmm. And Des Cookin took a Fine Gael seat. Uh, also, um, he has not joined the pact on Leitrim County Council, which involves Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael, and the three of the four independents elected in Leitrim. He has stood outside of that, and he has made it quite clear that of all the parties, uh, he doesn't particularly like Fianna Fáil, and I think Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael will be in the same boat. And I'm not being unfair or unkind to the man, uh, because he, he got elected and he's entitled to uh, his opinions. I'm just suggesting, being objective, that John suggesting that Des Cookings' votes are going to go to Fianna Fáil, I think it'll be a major bonus for Fianna Fáil, I have to add. Okay. I have to say. Remember well, all, all, all O'Rourke wants to catch him and Scanlon is 400 of them, which is less than 50%. Uh, of, of that vote in order to catch but, Scanlon. But are you, but John, are, are you taking account yeah, of, of the 8,000 uh, votes? Uh, and not only that, but of the initial eliminations. Surely that's going to push Damon Scanlon further ahead of Paddy O'Rourke. Well, the, the, the existing, existing, the current, uh, I'll, I'll count those, those to be eliminated before Guckian, uh, two of them we have at the moment, yes. and none of those, Sweeney or Murray, will not be transferred no. in any way at all to Scanlon. O'Hora is a Leitrim vote, another one, 603 uh, votes. It's a Leitrim vote based in the Carrigan Shannon area. I would think Paddy O'Rourke, again, will probably benefit from that there. They then the next one to be eliminated is Filan, and again, Scanlon will not be benefiting much. There's Sligo Town votes, and then we have the elimination of Guckian. Okay, we're going to see a bit of dissension for, uh, after, after all these hours. Okay, I'm just going to repeat the figures of the first count again. And, and again, Francie, if anybody wants to ask any questions or wants any indication, um, by all means, ask our panel. The first count, official figures, Bree Independent, 3,250, 3,250, Castlery Independent, 2,726, 2,726, Finbar Filan Renewa, 881, 881, Nigel Gallagher, People Before Profit, 1,768, 1,768, Des Guckian Independent, 1,060, 1,060, Martin Kenny of Sinn Féin, 6,356, 6,356, Chris McManus of Sinn Féin, 4,747, 4,747, Mark McSharry of Fianna Fáil, and 8,856, the poll topper. 8856. Tony McLaughlin, Fine Gael, 6172, 6172. Eamon Murray, Independent, 356, 356. Bernie O'Hara, Independent, 1206, 1206. Leslie O'Hara of the Green Party, 603. Susan O'Keefe, Labour, 1829, 1829. Paddy O'Rourke, Fianna Fáil, 5,447, 5,447. John Perry of Fianna Gael, 4,403, 4,403. Jerry Reynolds, Fianna Gael, 6,672, 6,672. <coughs> Eamon Scanlon of Fianna Fáil, 5,874, 5,874. And Bernard Sweeney, Independent, 129. Second count underway, Bernard Sweeney and um, Eamon Murray both eliminated. Sorry, John, did you want to say something here before I just give the figures? And incidentally, those figures are on our website, on our uh, Ocean FM website. You can still watch live on our Ocean FM website if you want to see what's happening here at the count. And remember to keep um, tweeting, Ocean FM Ireland, hashtag Sligo Leitrim. John? I, I expect the result of the second count about 9 o'clock, 5 past 9. Okay, about half an hour away. Maybe a bit less. Right, okay. Um, Pascal and Marion are, are scribbling furiously there, working out all <coughs> sorts of permutations. <coughs> Noel, what do you make of, of the situation there and how, it, how it's panning out? And well, I'd, I'd have to agree with uh, what Pascal was saying earlier there. Uh, you know, I mean, there is an awful lot of eliminations to come from Sligo. And they'll obviously, and they're mostly Sligo Town based, so they'll they'll will benefit the Sligo Town candidates. Um, I think it's going to be extremely close between Kenny and McManus for the Sinn Féin seat. Despite what he says, despite what Martin Kenny said earlier, he seems well, to be. 
Unfortunately, I wasn't here when Martin Kinney was speaking, but uh, I know he has improved his position on the uh, tallies. There are sorry on the first count, but at the same time, you know there is uh, about eight thousand votes to be eliminated around Sligo, and I think Chris McManus will benefit, you know, from Declan Bree, from Nigel Gallagher, and uh, some of the other left-wing parties in Sligo. So. I think it'll put him in a strong position. I think Tony McLaughlin will also benefit, uh, you know, by the eliminations. John Perry will probably be eliminated before Paddy O'Rourke yep. will come on stream. So I, I, I think Eamon Scanlon will be in a uh, will be in a strong position there. Yeah, and, and in relation to the Fine Gael seat, Pascal, any, any views on that at all? Because, uh, you know, an hour ago we were talking about two Fine Gael seats, uh, now there's... No, I never said there was two. Yeah, I know you didn't. Uh, other people did. Um, I, I know, people I, I'll within, know... People within your own party. Yeah, but I, well, I, I, what I've conceded is that Jerry Reynolds and Eamon Scanlon will be the last two standing, is what I'm suggesting. Okay. What I'm suggesting. Uh, and well, again, Marion has figures there, which I think bears out that yeah. the, pre the preponderance of the Sligo vote has, can't be ignored. Yeah. And again, just just to get just to get just to get just to get an overall picture. And I'm sorry to keep repeating myself, but what you're saying is, and you're all in agreement with that. You're not quite in agreement, but you're saying Mark McSharry, obviously, Martin Kenny for the Sinn Féin seat. I, I, I'm not. I'm not being a. I, I'm okay. Being a little bit. Oh, well, let's let's say Kenny, Kenny or McManus for yes, the Sinn Féin yes, seat. Yes. Tony McLaughlin. Yes. You're all agreed Tony McLaughlin will retain his seat. Yes, I think so. And then the last seat you all agreed is between uh, Reynolds, Scanlon and... and well, maybe the Sinn Féin. Maybe the Sinn Féin, yeah. yeah. But a, an interesting one. We've done a, a quick total here on the number twos from all of the candidates who will be elected, but not uh, Fine Gael. In other words, we, did, we didn't we'll include John Perry. Sorry, eliminated. sorry, excuse me, eliminated, yes. uh, but not including John Perry. And you're looking at 8986 Sligo votes, 9000 Sligo votes, 2828 Leitrim votes. So Leitrim votes are going to be, you know, difficult to come by. But that's not none of the main parties there. So we have a very interesting night ahead. People could go ahead and then be pulled back. Yeah. That okay. could happen. Yeah, you'd, you'd agree with that as well, Pastor. Oh, you yeah, well, yeah, I mean, Marion has done the, the, the math, and you're looking at 12,702 votes. Yeah. 12,702 votes to be distributed. And that's just of which, Sligo and Leitrim. Yeah, of we which 9,000 9, 9, are in Sligo. In Sligo town, okay. And, and that's something you said from a very, very early uh, time. And that, that, that excludes John Perry. It does, that excludes that, that John 9, Perry. That 9,000 excludes John yeah. Perry. Okay. Noel, quick comment from you. We'll take a quick break then. I know, I will concur with what Pascal and Marion are saying. I mean, you know, I'm saying this all day. The, the you know, the eight or 9,000 votes are in Sligo, and I think they're going to have a play a crucial role in, um, in in deciding the outcome and in particular whether it's Chris McManus or Martin Kinney because I mean whoever uh, whichever direction that seat goes in I think is going to determine the last seat uh, like if if it was a thing that Martin Kinney was eliminated uh, you know I think that um, Jerry Rinnens would obviously be elected and um, Obviously, if it's the other way around, if it's Chris McManus, is going to put Eamon Scanlon and uh, Tony Milachlan in a very strong position. Possibly elect the two of them. Uh, yeah, could I, could I just interject briefly sure, yeah. in the context of the dynamic between Martin Kenny, if he's eliminated, and Terry Reynolds? Uh, I was reminded earlier that in the last general election in Roscommon, South Leitrim, and South Leitrim would be the bulk of the vote this time out as well, that Sinn Féin's Martin Kenny, when he was eliminated, transferred significantly to who? Frank Feehan of Fine Gael and Boyle. So, it, it opens yeah. up. I, I, I have to say I was reminded of that because I would yeah, have okay. thought that it would have been, that would not have been the case. Okay, we'll take a quick break. Lots more to come. Uh, back again in the Clarion Hotel in a few moments. With the Johnny Galls and the Cal
you have the most fabulous 19th century building, complete with the most beautiful design. Right, it's Marion and Pascal again, and, and Noel and indeed John, you've been looking at, at the number two, the trends for the, the number two votes, and how many are coming from Leitrim and Sligo and Cavan and Donegal? Yes, we've been looking at them, and these are just rough figures now. Please don't anybody think these are 100% accurate. They're a quick toss, but they give, you know, a broad brush stroke. Sligo, 8986, so the guts of 9,000 votes. Leitrim, 2828, nearly 3,000. Cavan, just around 800, and Donegal, around 840. So you can see that a huge... Uh, what we're talking about here are number twos that are not coming from the main parties. So we're not including any Fianna Gael, any Fianna Fáil, any Sinn Féin. Um, you know, they're going to spread everywhere. But the thing is, a huge Sligo vote there. Yeah. Yes, Pascal. No worry, we're just picking up on, say, Cavan rather than Donegal. Yes. In terms of Cavan, um, it would seem to suggest that the beneficiaries of that 800 transfers would go to Mark McKenney, Jerry Reynolds and Paddy O'Neill. Whereas in Donegal, the beneficiaries will be uh, Mark McSharry, uh, Chris McManus, uh, Tony McLaughlin, uh, that they will be the beneficiaries of that 800 of Donegal. So that, that kind of impacts, but it, but it impacts, well in the sense that uh, the Sligo will gain from the 800 distributed votes in Donegal and the Leitrim candidates will benefit from the 800 coming out of Cavan. Now again that's only just an opinion. Yep. Uh, because of the location and geography, and also based on the uh, tally figures that we got for yeah. both Cavan and Donegal, and for the preferences that the voters in those two counties showed uh, on first preferences. So uh, I, I hope that's not confusing listeners. No, no. We're talking here about breaking up the totality of the votes available for, for distribution as the count progresses. And we have broken it down, and Marion has done the math on it, that of that group of preference, we're not talking first number ones here, we're talking about twos, threes, fours, fives, whatever. Of that totality, we extracted 800 out of Cavan. Uh, for the candidates that are going to be eliminated and we extracted another 800 as it turns out uh, out of Donegal again exclusive to those candidates that are going to be eliminated and not the candidates yeah. that are remaining in the race are the ones that are fighting for seats it's important to say we did not include John Perry's vote uh, oh yes, which is very important yeah. um, we left, we left, John yeah. Perry, yeah. and John Perry's vote yeah. will matter I mean that's another big yes. Sligo yeah. tranche yeah. of votes yeah. 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 so we didn't include it so that gives you some idea of the weight of votes yes. uh, so we'll have a look now and see if we can make any sense of them, but I'm afraid we'll probably have to wait on the counts now. Yeah, okay. Should, I'm surprised we haven't got a second count because it was very small. Yeah, five we're past nine, we're told, another 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah, well, it's interesting that it's taken that long. I mean, okay. we're looking at and, and three, five, six, and, and one, two, we, nine. What we might do is uh, we might take a, a news update at nine o'clock. Uh, no, no, we won't. No, we, we'll give the national, we have the national uh, trends here. 480. Second count in two. Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah. No, no, just a, no, no it's a, this is, there's a guest joining us in two minutes. <laughs> I thought it was the count in two minutes. Incidentally, we got caught out in the first count, as, as did RT. We all got caught out in that first count at Pascal. Say again? I'm saying we all got caught out in that first we count. We did, yeah, big time. That's why, yeah. that's why I can watch it out for the second one. It's, it's only 480 votes, and all they had to do was a simple mathematical equation. Yeah. I mean, really, all they had to do is just add up the votes for each of the candidates that are remaining and add them to them. Full stop. That's all. Okay. Eamon Scanlon has arrived at the count. We're going to talk to Eamon now in a moment as he, as he makes his way through the crowd and of course Eamon is in for a long weekend as well as we know to put it mildly former TD of course Eamon Scanlon TD um, and uh, lost his seat at the last election during the uh, during the uh, setback to Fianna Fáil uh, back in 2011 ok Eamon just, just put your headphones on Eamon you'll be able to hear what I, I can say Thanks for joining us, Eamon, first of all. Um, just arriving, I suppose. What sort of a day has it been for you so far? <laughs> I never find it kind of too easy, no, I'll tell you the truth. Yeah, you, you never do the easy way anyway. You don't do it the easy way, no. And first of all, I'd like to thank all the people that voted for me for not giving me such great support and the many, many people who came out, my family, the people who come out in canvas for me and worked so hard uh, over eight weeks 
in very inclement weather, I have to say. But, um, and also, as, as we said earlier, in every election there's winners and losers. I'd just like to uh, commiserate with my colleague in Belly Moat, uh, John Perry, and to Marie and Jude and the family. Um, I know what it's like for that to happen, and it's not a nice place to be. But look, at, we, get, we get up and get on with things. OK, um, right, it's going to be a long weekend, as we say for you, and it looks like... <laughs> It's, it's very hard when you're in the thick of it, and we do appreciate you taking the time to, yeah. to join us, but how, how, how do you see it panning out? Well, people tell me that I'm, I'm in with a good chance. Um, there's a lot of Sligo votes to be distributed. Um, I'd be hopeful, I would be hopeful that I could hang on and get that last seat, but now it's still going to be down to a handful of votes yeah. at the end of the day. I think, I think all our honest would agree. Um, you, you mentioned yeah. John Parry. How, how significant are his votes going to be? Do you think for you down the line, or have you thought that far ahead yet? Well, being votes from South Sligo, I would uh, be hoping that there would be a substantial vote there for me in terms of uh, distribution. Okay, but uh, you're happy with your first preference vote? Uh, it was, yeah, it was. It's, it was a very competitive election, and uh, easy candidates in the field, um, the constituency spread from, as we all know, from Cavan to to uh, South Donegal, um, difficult, big area to canvas, um, and I said 18 candidates, uh, nobody knew really, nobody had any idea, I don't think, until the boxes were being opened, how this was going to pan out. But I am delighted with the vote, and thanks to the people who supported me once again. I, I think Pascal made the point earlier, and you probably know this to be the case, South Sligo has always had a TD. Always or back until always, always, always. I think from back yeah, to the foundation of the states. Okay, and uh, it's been so it would be unprecedented, God forbid, that he would overturn the TD. <laughs> it would be. It would be a pity for South Sligo when, if we haven't uh, a TD to represent them in the whole area. So I'd be hopeful. I'd be hopeful that uh, I'd hang on yeah. to win that seat. Okay. Pascal, Marion, do you want to say anything? Pascal, you want to yeah, sorry. say anything uh, to Eamon? Yeah, I, a couple of things I want to ask Eamon. First of all, Eamon, congratulations on your vote, because uh, if you look at uh, last time, you got 5,075 which I'm sure is written on your brain, <laughs> um, and it must have been personally pleasing for you that you're now on 5874. It, it is, yes. Yeah, That's the first thing. Yeah. The second thing is, would you be disappointed with your return out of Donegal? I mean, 61 votes seems a No, return. I wasn't really, because I knew Mark had worked Donegal very, very hard. He had good support down there, and I was expecting that he would vote. I'd like to congratulate Mark as well on the vote he got. And to everybody who ran, you know, it's a brave thing to put your name on the ballot paper. To all the um, Absolutely. candidates that yeah. ran. Now, to cut to the chase, the question that is on all our minds is John Perry's transfers. Can you give us any insight, or have any of your people been tracking it? Yeah, any people, idea? People have been looking at them. Now, John Comiskey made a prediction earlier this morning, I think, that possibly uh, 21%. Yes. So... I'd say they seem to be confirming that figure. It's close enough, I think. How much? 21%. Which translates very well, 21% is uh, top of the island standard out of our which is what a fifth. 544, 800. 800? Surely you get more than 800. Well, that's, that's, what, that's, what John, that's what John predicted. So. But, but I will just ask you, you for your good instinct. Uh, 4,400 votes to be transferred, and maybe more, because by the time it gets to John, uh, he could have another five or 600 or 700. Um, so, surely, in order for you to be in there with a fighting chance, you'd need to pick up more than 800, would you? I don't know if Noel has a view about that, because he's the Finnegan guru here. Um, Eamon, Is that realistic? I, I think you get a lot more, to be honest with you. John Perry is currently on 4,400 votes on the first count. I suppose by the time he'll be eliminated, he'll be on 5,000 votes. And plus, I'd be surprised if you wouldn't take 2,000 out of those, 40% of them. Uh, I know you're in Ballymote, you're only down the street from... T I suppose to take 50% would be a big ask, but uh, I'd certainly see you taking 40%, which would be 2,000 votes. 
if, if that is correct and if I do get 40% it certainly will put me in a very strong position okay. to win that fourth and final right. seat. Mar Marion wants to make a, a, a and point First of all, well done, congratulations. Uh, you're in there with the, with the real chance. Um, I looked at those uh, tallies. They represented 15% of Perry's votes. But what we didn't know, Eamon, was what boxes they came from. If they, we, It was 21%, but we don't know if there was Ballymote boxes in that or not. And we also know you did very well in Ballymote. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I'm not sure the 40%, I, I think, I just don't know. It might be a little bit high at that stage, but you probably need to get 30% anyway. And that wouldn't be an unreasonable ask. No, it wouldn't, and if I do, it will certainly put me in a strong position. All right. Anything between 30 and 40. 20 is going to leave it extremely tight. Okay. You must have been particularly pleased, by the way, after those Marion's comments, your, your hometown vote. Oh yes, it was a great vote from Hannibal, no question yeah. about it. Okay, it's a difficult time. I know it's difficult for you to come in, and we appreciate right. you coming in, Eamon. Um, this stage, I mean, it's, it's a, going to be a long weekend for you and uh, your family and your friends and supporters. Uh, I'm getting used to it at this I stage. You, are, I say, you, all, you always seem to do the hard way, Eamon, but, the, but there you go. Hey, Niall, I was going to say, I'm sorry, Eamon, for the Inquisition. The last thing that you need is to be quizzed about analysis of votes when you're thinking of other things that are more important. But you see, we're grasping for some sort of solution to this conundrum, yes. all of us. So that's why everybody that's, we believe, a central player in this, and you're a very central player in terms of the transfers, we inevitably are going to ask you the question. We don't perhaps honestly expect you to give us an answer, but at least some sort of an insight. And it is rather interesting that your people have suggested uh, around 800 votes. I, 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 Maybe we'll send you away feeling a bit, a little bit buoyed up. We don't believe that. No. We think it'll be more. All right. Okay. <coughs> Eamon, thanks for joining us. The best thanks of luck time. over the weekend. We know that we'll talk to you in, in due course again. Thanks very much. Thanks for joining Thank us. You. Eamon Scanlon. Okay, it's approaching nine, 9 o'clock. We're told the second count is about five minutes away. Thanks so we'll get the break out of the way and join us again in the Clarion Hotel in a few minutes. So it's like all to the uh, Clarion Hotel in Sligo and uh, just to let you know our panel are still here Niall has just popped out to take for himself a sandwich uh, you see uh, 
And I see uh, Michael Comiskey is here. We might have a quick word with uh, Michael Comiskey. Well, you well. Michael, uh, I suppose first thing to say is probably not, not a great day for Fine Gael today. Well, no, not nationally it's a difficult day for us, all right. But uh, I see along, I suppose, along the east coast, along Dublin, uh, we're doing much better than we thought earlier on in the day. So we're picking up a certain yeah. amount. But it's a difficult day for us. But I suppose, in all fairness, we've had, over the last five years, a difficult job to do. And we've done that. And possibly, and I said this earlier on with your colleagues in Donegal, maybe we, we tried to do what, what had to be done uh, in too short a time. You know, if we give ourselves that little bit more time. But anyway, uh, we found the country in a very difficult situation in 2011. Uh, we've taken us out of that mire, and uh, hopefully that we will have stable government now going forward. But it's uncertain now at the moment what that will be. I suppose when you look at the figures that have that just come out there a few moments ago from the first count, you'd wonder if a two-candidate strategy would have been a better approach. Well, yes, I suppose in that early on in the campaign, that was the strategy, but we all know what has happened since that, and uh, we had three, and that's what we had to run with, but uh, yeah, it's very hard to know. Maybe maybe a two might uh, give us two seats, but uh, who knows? We're, we're always wise, easier to be wise after the event, but uh, I suppose it has been a difficult day, and it has been a long, difficult campaign for Everybody involved, in, and the candidates in particular, they would have had a, a tough three weeks. But uh, and, it, and it's, it's too bad to see people losing out. To somebody, somebody has to lose out. We've had a lot, of, a lot of candidates on the ballot paper, and uh, some of them had to lose out. And you have a few candidates in this race. How do you see the, the seats going here in Slido Leitrim? Well, it's very hard. I suppose that that thing, final seats now, is very hard. I suppose Mark McShay seems to be okay, but. Uh, You'd, you'd wonder is if Chris McManus or, or Mark McKinney is going to take that one. And then you have uh, Tony, Jerry Reynolds and Eamon Scanlon in there as well. So uh, very, very hard to know how they're going to go. I'm not long here now because I was in Donegal all day um, and I'm just uh, getting grips with it here. But uh, it's, a long, it's going to be a long night and it's going to be possibly a long day tomorrow as well for some people. Do you think we'll, uh, I suppose when this weekend is out of the way, all focus will probably switch on the leadership of uh, Fianna Gael. Do you see that happening? Well, I don't see that happening just at the moment. We have to wait and see what the result is first of all. And then... I, I suppose uh, see about forming a government and uh, if we are the largest party may, maybe not I don't know uh, but of course uh They'll come an onus on, on independents and smaller parties as well. If they're going to pick up maybe up to 30% of the vote, uh, it, w it will be up to them to, 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 to look at it as well. But it's very, very hard to know. And some big names gone today. James Riley, we've heard already of. And, uh, That's right, of course, yes. Uh, yeah, some big names gone. as right, and Alan Shatter gone just before I left. So um, it, is, it is a difficult day for those people. And I suppose we... Uh, you know, um, empathise with them. It's, it's a difficult time, but uh, that's politics, and that's 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 how it goes. All right, Senator Michael Comiskey, thanks a million for joining us. Okay, Kevin, thank you very much. Thanks for that. So that's Senator Michael Comiskey there, uh, chatting to us. Nile on the floor. Back to you. Thanks for that, Kevin. Thanks to uh, to Michael Comiskey as well. Okay, well, just about uh, it's about five past nine. We're expecting the second um, second count any time soon. Um, right, just before we go back to Pascal and Marion Clare, Clare Mulcahy's on the. You're welcome here. Actually, joining me now is Jerry McIntyre. Jerry, um, just for our listeners, you're a, a Fianna Fáil activist, um, and you're with the McSharry campaign. Can you? I, I take it you're feeling pretty good now today. Oh yes, Claire. We um, we really are chuffed. We didn't know what we were going to expect in South Donegal. There was a lot of apathy, and that is well documented on the radio. But. Um, we put a big effort in and it paid off. The 26% of the, the vote, 1,055. We're, we're quite happy. We could have squeezed more, but we're quite happy. And I know uh, you are based in um, Ballyshannon yourself, and there was a lot of concern there with the change in the boundaries as to just about the turnout and things like that. But in the end, um, people did seem to come out um, to vote all right. Ah, yes. A lot of people there would um, said that they weren't going to come out. But once the euphoria of the election kicks in, three days beforehand, and the debates on the television, and people then start making up their mind, and um, we were going around with a van, uh, telling people to go out and vote, um, they do, the eventually come out, and there was no different to turn out than any other part of the constituency. So, uh, 
we really don't have anything to complain about now. Yeah. We got, we got stuck in. And I know you were um, telling me earlier, like the changes in the boundaries there are uh, something that are of concern and something that Mark McSharry, he looks set to get elected now and, you know, said he would, would look at. I mean, what is the ideal situation? It's very hard with small populations, I suppose, like Leitrim, you know, does it always have to go in with uh, with somewhere like South Donegal or you, you think it would be better to keep the, the counties together? Yes, where possible we keep the counties together and we're, it's not like Leitrim where there's, what is it, 35,000 people, a couple of them with Sligo, but don't cut uh, co uh, counties in two or, uh, because people feel disenfranchised if um, if they put in with another people that they don't know, and we do feel sorry. We've known it for years with Leitrim, uh, where they were uh, put in with Scross Common and they put in with Sligo, and now they're in with South Donegal and West Cavan. It's very disconcerting for for them. It's very hard for campaigns. Then you don't have the same two campaigns, one election after another. Where other counties that are, like we say, look, example, Clare have been together since the foundation of the state. Yeah, and I'm sure the questions you get now, and um, Jerry, would be, you know, Mark uh, McSherry, for example, is based in Sligo. People in Ballyshannon, Bundoor, and be wondering, well, what can he do for us up there when he is elected? I mean, what is your answer when they ask questions like that? Well, when they ask that question, there we didn't, we didn't give them what they, Mark can do for them. We said, what do you want Mark to do for you? And whatever you you say, then we'll get him to work on that. And people that done that now in a small way, yes, that's what he done or helped to do. And there was different things. And I know early on when he came up, when he was doing his clinics, I asked him would he uh, meet with the county manager, uh, Seamus Neely, that's the Donegal county manager, and he said he did. And we set up a meeting, and it was very productive. And we talked about rules, and we talked about uh, rates in, in the towns, and different things like that. And but it's what we asked Mark to do. Not what he was. He's not going to come with a big yeah. Hewlett Packard factory with a thousand workers. You know that's not going to happen. Yeah. And I know, Jerry, you were telling me earlier you are normally tallying up in in Letterkenny, but uh, today obviously you're down here for obvious reasons. But that's is it, is it a change for you? Oh, it certainly is because where um, I wouldn't normally belong belong to uh, Donegal South West. And then I would tally in, in that, and then I also would tally in the local elections. I'm sorry that they've done away with the town and urban uh, uh, elections because they were great fun. But uh, with council elections, I done the tallies, and I have done the tallies for Ocean FM, and went on a panel. I, mi I miss that now with Margaret Carflin and Daniel Brown today, but I can't be in the two places. Yeah. And uh, but I do enjoy counts, and I do enjoy looking at counts and whatever. And the four, um, the four seats here, you feel will be filled with without any of them possibly reach, reaching the quota. What What do you think? Well, the way that the um, transfers are going going all over the place, I don't think that anybody's going to reach the quota. Even the, the Mark McSherry, that head of the poll, would need nearly three and a half thousand votes to reach the quota. That, I don't think that's going to happen. So I'm going to, what I believe is going to be the last four standing will be elected. Okay. And who do you feel, I mean, have you have you analysed <laughs> all of the details like these good people here next to us? I know they've been crunching numbers all all afternoon, but it's very difficult to say it's going to be very, very close anyways. Well, you asked me about the four that I think is going to be elected. Yeah, go on, tell but, but, but if you don't ask me in order, but I think it'll, it'll be McSharry, Kenny, McLaughlin and Reynolds. No, but you're not going to quote me on that one. <laughs> we'll play it back to you later on. Thank you, Claire. Jerry, listen, thanks very much for talking to not us. Not at all. Thank, Thank you, Newt. Back Thank over to you, Niall. Thanks to Claire and thanks to Jerry. There's another person forecasting two Fianna Gael seats. Um, interesting that uh, on Tisha Kenda Kenny has arrived at the Count Centre in Castlebar and conceded, obviously enough, that Fianna Gael and Labour would not have the numbers to form the next government. But he said there was an onus on him as Taoiseach to try and continue the work of the current administration. However, he's going to do that. Well, it's interesting to see what Micheál Martin has said. He's confirmed that he will seek to form a government without Fine Gael when the Dáil meets on the 10th of March. I, I did indicate that when you asked me the question earlier on in the afternoon, and I said that we'd wait until the dust settles. But yeah. that would seem to be uh, the way that Fianna Fáil are going to go. Okay. 
uh, based on the totality of the receipts, and that's why I was a little reluctant to commit. But I'm not surprised that Michal Martin uh, would have indicated that. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, because he did put himself forward from day one yeah. as an alternative, credible alternative, and there were people after him at the beginning of the campaign, and by the end of the campaign, they were having a, singing a different tune. So, okay. and in fairness to him, he was very consistent on that—that that he was putting forward an alternative to the to the, the electors of Ireland, and that he was the only credible alternative. Well, what alternative is, is, is it going to be it remains to be seen. And Noel, I want a comment from you, and then I'm, we're going to be joined by another guest. Uh, no, just just a text I'm after getting there in Dunleary, Finnegan is after taking two seats. Yeah. Uh, Sean Barrett is the sitting can call yet, so Finnegan is three seats out of four in Dunleary. So Dunleary was always a little bit different than the rest of the country, anyway, Noel, wasn't it? Well, uh, you know, and I'll, it's as well to give you good news as, uh, oh, you know, you're hearing a lot of bad news here all day, so... Okay. There's, a, there's a positive side to every story. Okay, and I think in Mayo, oh, you're still in, in with a shout for three three seats in Mayo. Possibly getting the third seat in Mayo yeah. as well, yeah. Okay. Can I say, sorry, Mary. The Sligo connection there yeah. for Dunleary, of course, is Mary Mitchell O'Connor. Yeah. And uh, great, great for her. But just an interesting one, Niall, if you haven't heard it, the Donegal uh, tallies. Um, very interesting here. Pierce Doherty, first of all, the quota is 12,218. Um, Charlie McConnell has got 12,533, so he's elected. And then he is followed by Pierce Doherty on 10,300, Pat the Cope on 10,200, um, McLaughlin is back on 5,742, and Thomas Pringle, the independent, is about 580 votes ahead of him on 6,220. So that looks like a ding dong battle for that last seat. Now, I don't know who's, we do know that Hart Finnegal is, is in, in and there as well, and other, he's in his own. But the question mm, is, are they more likely? likely to transfer to Pringle yeah, or are they transfer they're in the south. there's one in there's his hometown there's, there's only two from the south yeah. Neve, Neve Kennedy Nick, and, and his hometown in Killybex yeah so he will probably you don't know, get and a we substantial vote. Well, she, we she, was in, she was in 2% the last time. Yeah, I but in real it. terms, you don't know what her vote is. All we've got here is the It's the, figures. The, the but I mean, it just shows the there's a ding-dong battle in uh, Donegal. Yeah. By the way, I was just about to say about uh, the, what Noel was saying, and well done, Noel. Uh, it is uh, a little bit of a, a, a silver cloud, uh, or a silver lining to a dark cloud for Fine Gael. But I would say that Fianna Fáil are desperately disappointed uh, in Dunleary Ratdown because Mary Hannafin was leading out there and she yeah. was kind of headquarters choice to a degree apart from maybe trying to fill the gender quota and I don't want to be in any way disrespectful to her okay. because uh, she is an elected councillor and a former minister but Cormac Devlin who is a very hard working councillor in that area um, he was he was on his own he won the convention yeah. uh, outright and um, then they added Mary subsequently yeah. because they felt that her profile was so high and, and of course Cormac Devlin got to see her was getting no, the no no it's a three seat it's three seats, isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. Now, um, Hannafin was um, maybe 1,500 votes ahead of Devlin, or certainly that's over right. 1,000. Early on. So, that's right. so, Early on. so, so no. I have to say, there's no seats at all, considering the battle there was between Kate Feeney, of course, the Sligo Connections, Sligo Connections and, Connections and, Jardine, yeah. and uh, you had Kate and Mary, both councillors. The feeling was that uh, the ding-dong battle between them and the okay. media publicity resulted in us getting two, where there was only one on, on the cards. Okay. But I just want to finally wrap that up and say, that that is a major disappointment for Fianna Fáil, uh, that they didn't take a seat in that constituency. Okay, I want to bring our next guest, he's been waiting here for some time, Michael Clark, you're very welcome. Councillor Michael Clark, of course, you were sitting, uh, well, he wasn't in the Clarion Hotel, actually, he was in the Castle Dargan Hotel. You were, you were a, a, um, a candidate five years ago, Michael, independent candidate. That's, that's and, right. And polled a very respectable, what, two and a half thousand votes? Two and a half thousand votes, and... Um, I played my part in that election too, and I think transfers went every place. I think the Fine Gael got most of the transfers. John Perry got 580 out of them, and uh, I think Mark Mishari got 440, and uh, 390 went to Scanlon, and 200 to Midlothian. So it was a real independent vote at that occasion that went everywhere. And yeah. You have, that, a great, uh, you have a great memory. Well maybe, maybe it's actually on your memory, uh, uh, Michael. Uh, uh, can I just make one point that sure. none of your panel has mentioned here tonight? The, the quote at 12,468 yep. is probably one of the highest in the country. Uh, and all over the east, it's, the quotas are in around 9,000, 10,000, maybe 11 is high. So the Electoral Commission has got it terribly wrong here in the northwest. I think that the, the county, the four 
seats constituency of Sligo Leitrim that it should devolve back to the county boundaries. I think it's something that has to be looked at in the future. I think this is totally wrong for the people of South Donegal and West Cavan. Uh, and then totally wrong for candidates trying to achieve 12,500 in general election. Okay, well, Jerry from Bally Shannon said a moment ago, and Pascal Boston Green, I know that, um, and we'll get your views on this, Michael, that um, it'll be the last four standing that nobody will exceed the quota. They'll have to. It's quite extraordinary what's going to happen here because it all depends on which of the two Sinn Féin candidates are ahead uh, when it comes to that point. If, if the Leitrim Sinn Féin candidate is behind, uh, it, 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 it shows, and he's eliminated, it will definitely put Reynolds into the doll and may help Scanlon to beat McLaughlin. But it's, that is going to be a very interesting challenge. Which of the Sinn Féin will survive? If it's a Sligo Sinn Féin man that, that has to be eliminated when it comes to that point, it, it could well suit McLaughlin and Scanlon. So it's going to be a very interesting... So, so are you, uh, from what you're saying, so it's by no means certain that Tony McLaughlin is going to retain his seat. Is that what you're saying? No, he, there's not much between any of them there. And uh, we have to see whether that transfer is genuine that's going to come from Perry to McLaughlin. And then we have to see what transfer comes from Perry Rope to Fianna Fáil, which could, could keep Scanlon back in it. So there's going to be very little in it at that stage, I believe. And I, could, I can still see... Uh, McManus taking a seat along with uh, Reynolds and Scanlon taking the, f the three seats along with McSharry. Okay. Well, what, what do you make of, of the um, the results and Mark McSharry's performance and Fianna Fáil's performance in particular, in general? Well, it's obvious that Mark McSharry has done the work on the ground because he has doubled his vote in Sligo in every boot that he was in. He has doubled it. It's obvious that he has worked hard as a, a senator and he has uh, motivated the people. And I think that the Fianna Fáil people uh, believe that looking forward that if Fianna Fáil go back into power that McSharry was probably the only one of the 18 candidates that could, uh, could achieve high office and become a senior minister and if we look at throughout Ireland the senior ministers have delivered 6,000 jobs to Limerick and Waterford where the senior ministers are in Dublin and really the North West have really been left behind. And you'd be looking that far ahead Michael, you would, in, in well, terms I, of, of a ministry for Mark McSharry as we said, he hasn't even been think, elected yet. Yes, but well, I think that he has that ability to do, certainly deliver and he has that appeal now and he, he, he is young, and I, I have to say that he is. Uh, I also, you know, think that uh, nationally, that he, that you know, he is well got by the Fianna Fáil party and Leon Merton, and he has that ability to get in the inside track there. And I think that he will go ahead from here now. I think that his future has begun the doll. Okay, I seem to remember somebody discussing your votes um, from five years ago, many, many hours ago. I can't remember who brought it up. Yeah. Marion, no, do you want to ask Michael? Or yeah, yeah I'm actually, I'm interested in, in what uh, Michael has to say, and um, there were two things. One is I agree with you about Mark's future, Michael. Uh, in fact, Owen Harris, who served in the Senate uh, with both of us, uh, stated more than once that he believed that Mark Macharry was a future leader of Fianna Fáil. I know that's really jumping ahead, but I would share uh, Michael's view or uh, opinion about uh, the future for Mark McSharry in the context of there ever being a fee in the fall ministries um, because he, he has the ability and also I'm sure Michael would agree and he kind of inferred it that in making up their minds in Sligo particularly uh, about the future I think a lot of voters looked at Mark as being the future uh, and being perhaps in the best position to be a minister and of course the fact that his dad was a minister wouldn't have been a disadvantage to him in that regard but I wanted to ask Michael what he thinks is going to happen with the Perry vote in South and West London. Uh, does he believe that... Uh, I think that's what we were referring to earlier. That yeah. John Perry is going to transfer significantly to Eamon Scanlon on the basis that South Sligo would have made a choice that they want to TD. Um, rather than uh, okay. uh, what would be Michael. a traditional well, legal transfer. Yeah, well, what we know from history is that the local 40% uh, of the vote will transfer locally and 60% will follow party lines. That has been the tradition down to the years. And uh, But I think that, you know, 40 to, to Scanlon, 30 to Reynolds and 30 to Monatlo will keep, still keep Scanlon in it. And I think that uh, the, key, the key votes will be from Leitrim. The votes, if it's going to be a Sinn Féin elimination and uh, a Fianna Fáil elimination, that's going to be key for, me, for, for Scanlon. And Scanlon had a great campaign and he was well got in, the, in rural Sligo and 
you know, it's definitely, it's definitely an over. Can I all just say before you leave me, I want to say that I'd like to pay a tribute to my two colleagues on the on the council, Declan Bree and uh, Marie Castley, that has done a fantastic job in, in the council. They're two lovely people, and I'm disappointed for them as I am for John Perry and all the people that are not, are not going to be make it today. It's yeah. you know, they put their li heart on the line, and the, uh, they put you know, even uh, fighting from Rudy, a lo lovely lad, and uh, and talking to Damon Murray earlier. They're all the finest of fellas, and everybody can't be winners on this day. Okay, uh, you, just before you go, Michael, just call for it as you see it now. Who's going yeah, to get well, the first? I, I, I'm, I'm, I want to say, I want to, say, I think myself that if if Kenny is the man, Fein, Sinn Féin to be behind, that it'll be Scanlan, uh, uh, Scanlan and McManus, McSharry and and Rinnells. Right, it's amazing the amount of combinations we're still getting. Just, just quite amazing. But it all, it all depends. It all depends on those transfers for Sinn Féin. Like Bree is going yeah. to transfer very heavily now to McManus, and so the town vote is. So if that puts uh, McManus uh, 1,500 votes ahead, you're, uh, Perry K Kelly will will be there. Okay, Michael, many thanks for joining us, Michael Thank Clark. That's the Independent Council, Michael Clark, former general election candidate. It'll be interesting to hear from our next guest, who's Nigel Gallagher, people before profit. A uh, candidate, uh, Nigel Pohl, a very respectable, uh, well, yeah, 1,768 folks in his first county, his first, um, his first tilt at any election, I think, Nigel, unless you were in some student election one time that I didn't know about. Is that your first election ever, Nigel? It is indeed, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. you must be very, very happy with that. Vote. Very happy with the, with the yeah. vote, yes, 1,700 votes. And I think it's an expression of the kind of, the dy dynamism and vibrancy that people for profit have bought, bought to the left and Sligo and... Um, yeah, we're going to just keep building, keep building from that. It's a, yeah. It's a really okay. Uh, have you time to analyse your vote for your votes came? Obviously, strong side of town vote from strong side. Yeah, and obviously Mahro. Where yeah. from Mahro? Where you're from? Good vote. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we were actually doing really well in places like Leitrim and Cavan as well. Um, you know, I think we outpolled John Perry in Leitrim. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really, really happy with it, you know. And I mean, I think nationwide it's looking very promising for the left. Um, the, we're looking, looking to get seven seats. Um, hopefully, we'll get a parliamentary block. Um, we're, we're in the race, anyways, there for that, and it'll be great. You know, we'll be bringing then a genuine left voice. Yeah. Inside, we'll have speaking rights and all that kind of thing. Okay, so, so a good experience for you. Something you enjoyed, or was it hard work, or was it? It was hard work, but I enjoyed it. Was it was a bit well. of an eye opener to you. It was an eye opener. Isn't it? There was a. Obviously, a lot of you know, we we're coming up with a lot of people that were very stressed on the doors, and um, but you know, obviously, a lot of people are in difficulty out there, and um, I think that's actually been expressed in the left wing vote that's happened in, in Sligo, and that's um, you know, something that we're, we're going to try and work for and for the, for the interests of ordinary people, you know. Okay, there's been a lot of discussion here in the panel today about where your votes are going to go um, when that time comes. Have you any indication from your camp as to how? Where your preferences um, are going? Um, I'd say a lot of them will stay on the left. You know, they'll go towards Declan, and then they'll go towards um, Chris and Sinn Féin, and probably Martin Kenny as well. So, yeah, there just seems to be quite. They're probably the right to change, uh, all the right to change candidates in that vote transfer pact is like seeing seeing as fruition here. You know. All right. Okay. Pascal, you want to? I can I say, Ask, Michael, you have a question or? Yeah. Well done on on your campaign. Uh, I think you impressed a lot of people. Uh, in the various yeah, debates. I, 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 stand, I stand corrected here, but I think you're the youngest candidate, Nigel. Are you? I am, yeah. 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 And uh, Nigel, I, I attended a couple of the uh, public meetings, and you're a, a very articulate young man, and I think that Stigo politics will be enhanced by your continuing presence. Uh, and wish you well in that regard. But um, at the nuts and bolts of this debate, um, did you manage when he's your people... To, he's going to grill you now, Nigel. Just, just when, uh, when, you, when your people were looking at your vote, did you get any indication as to uh, the pattern of preferences? For example, would the people who voted for you have voted down the slate of left-wing candidates? That's what it's looking like. Uh, yeah. uh, rather than stop with one or two. Yeah. No, it's actually looking towards left-wing candidates. That's so... In that context, as um, Chris McManus is significantly ahead of Declan Bree, uh, would you be of the opinion that um, the elimination, uh, and I'm sorry for using the word, uh, but let's say the distribution uh, of the votes on the left uh, are going to be of benefit to Chris McManus ultimately rather than Martin Kenny? 
it seems to be like I'm, I'm sure it'll probably be a Sligo Town vote as well, you know. Yeah. Um, so it, it probably will. Uh, it probably will benefit Chris um, more so than me, I would say. Yeah. yeah. And okay. the other question is: Would you also agree that people who would have voted, uh, voters who would have voted for you, and expressed a, pre- a number one for you, that in voting down the slate of left wing, that they may have continued on? And I'm probably being. I'm not being mischievous here at all, I'm just trying to get, get inside your head and I'm probably you're not able to answer it, but would, would it, it would have been an anti-government vote. Yeah. In other words, they would not have given preferences, yeah. uh, firstly to Fine Gael yeah, or later. I suppose, yeah. you know, people that are voting for me are voting because of the actual chaos that the traditional establishment parties have caused, you know, you know, they're spouting about things like recovery, 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 but ordinary people aren't feeling that. So it's going to be pretty obvious that uh, they won't actually, they won't, they're not going to go to the establishment parties. Um, they, it, you know, they're voting for me because they want change, they want to, you know, end to austerity, um, have a li- live in a more civilised society. Um, they're not going to transfer to <laughs> basically the, the parties that have obviously destroyed much of the social fabric of, of Ireland. Right? Okay, Nigel, for your own point of view, uh, is it local elections next time, or is that something you'd be looking yep. for? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, um, we'll be looking at looking at running. Yeah. Okay, but do you enjoy the campaign? I know I was following you on social media. I mean, you, you did you did do the rounds. It's a big geographic area. But it was, you did. Yeah. We've been going. We've been on the go since um, yeah, since September really, because we thought there was going to be a November election. And obviously, the way that people for profit is organised, it's activists and I think that's what uh, that's why we brought such a vibrancy to the to things like the anti-water charges movement within Sligo we had activists out protesting against the, the installation of the water meters etc and went out delivering leaflets and putting up posters and constantly constantly working at that and um, we'll, we'll be out campaigning next week you know I'll, we're, okay. we're not just there for elections we'll be there's still fracking is on the agenda it's looking like it's um, uh, looking like uh, they, be, they might be doing some drilling in Belfast. So, you know, we're, we're an all Ireland 32 county party that is, works on activism. We'll be trying to protect the interests of ordinary people and, you know, and fight for a better society, more equal society. Okay. Nigel, many thanks for joining us. Well done again. Thanks a lot. Great, great performance, first time out, and for such a, such a young man, it's nice to see. Oh, sorry, Marion wanted to. Yeah, just can yeah. I say, well done, Nigel. 1,768 thanks, votes. That's a very, you know, it's a very good vote, first time out. And also considering that Declan Bree on 3250, I mean, what you're looking at there is 5,000 votes in yeah. that yeah. sector. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that you managed to pull 1,768 yeah. is a good outcome. I mean, yeah. well done on that. Yeah. And your first time out, as you said, you know? Appreciate it, yeah, thanks. Okay, thanks for that, Nigel. Thanks for joining us. I think we've had another break. We would totally have had the second count by now, obviously. Yeah. I don't know why it's taking so long. It's uh, okay. it's uh, it's over an hour and a quarter since we had the first count. I tell you, Shemi, we'll take a quick break I to get it out. I think the calculators are broken up on that count. I cannot understand why there's a I mean, delay. I genuinely it was, it was, somebody it was 12 minutes past eight. I know I'm in a bit of a rant here, but I mean, okay. I've been at so many counts, and why it is taking so long to to distribute 480 votes, and in fact, it might need to be 480, because it could be some non-transferable votes. What is it going to be like when they have a couple of thousand? Sure, we'll be here till morning. I mean, this, this, right. this makes no sense. No sense. The rent is over and the ad break is next. Uh,
you have the most fabulous 19th century building, complete with Elizabethan facade. It stands on its own grounds, three and a half acres to the front, with ample complimentary car parking. What makes the Clarion Hotel? And you're very welcome back to us here in the Clarion Hotel for the Sligo Leitrim Count. Uh, Niall has just popped out for a moment, so I'm stepping in as Kevin Blessing here. And Pascal, we were just sitting there before the ad break. Uh, why is it taking so long for us to distribute these few votes? No, I, I appreciate that the returning officer has got to be absolutely meticulous. But uh, having had a lot of experience of counts, we're talking here about 480 votes. And why does it take, when did we get the results of the first count? Is it an hour ago? That it's taken that length of time for to count up. What effectively happens is that they have to look at all of the papers uh, of uh, Mr. Sweeney and... Um, Murray. They look at they, they, they take out the take back out their papers, they look at all of them and they have to scrutinize them to look at the next preference on each and it has to be it have to be a number two uh, on each of them. They then have to take out those that perhaps didn't give a number two. They might have just given number one. So there would be a blank. So they're taken out of the equation and they're referred to as non transferable votes because there's no vote to transfer. So you're left then with less than four hundred and eighty probably, maybe four six 450. And what they do then is they apportion the number two votes to the, each of the remaining candidates. So maybe it's the fact that there would be, what, 16 candidates, Marion, that would be left with the two that are... That, that there's six. That there's sixteen. Yeah, but I mean, they're just going to look at their number twos. That's yeah. all they and have to they do is count them. them. Yeah, and they, put, they add them then to the totals of the other sixteen candidates. So yeah. what will be announced then will be, for example, I'm just looking at the top of the paper here, Declan Bree, uh, three thousand two hundred and fifty plus ten, or plus five, or whatever, and that's it. So I don't understand. I mean, Mario was a teacher. Sure, the calculator should have done it in half an hour. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe when we get the count, um, we'll know what the reason is. But it, it is taking a bit of time, but um, you can't really judge until you hear, because we don't know what's happening. Um, but just, um, I was looking here, I don't know if you're interested in some of the national stuff, but um, I see that... Um, uh, Mary Lou MacDonald has been elected uh, in Dublin Central, followed by Pascal Donoghue. And then the last seat there is going to be a battle between Mary Fitzpatrick for Fianna Fáil, Christy Burke, uh, the former Sinn Féin, former former Lord Mayor. and Jerry Gannon of the Social Democrats. That's interesting really? there, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see that Mary Fitzpatrick is in with a shout because a uh, former city councillor, uh, daughter of Dermot Fitzpatrick, former Fianna Fáil TD, very popular man on the Navan Road, and Mary herself stood for Fianna to fall in the Dublin constituency for the Euro elections and as a result to, had to um, stand down as a city councillor which I think might not have helped her in terms of her profile in the subsequent 18 months, two years and in a sense I don't think her seat was a targeted seat for Fianna Fáil primarily because that constituency was reduced down from four to three and Pascal Donoghue uh, was supposed to be in trouble and I have to say on a personal level I'm particularly pleased that Pascal Donoghue has been returned I worked with him in the Senate, he is an exceptionally bright boy uh, and he has visited Leitrim um, and has a great empathy with rural Ireland I have to say now from my experience of him and uh, would have been a great loss to the national political scene irrespective of party uh, I, I, he's an excellent minister for transport and I have no doubt that in any future Fine Gael government that not only will he have a senior ministry but he will be one of the future leaders of Fine Gael in my opinion mm. I, I'd agree with Senate. Pascal or with, uh, with Pascal yeah. about yeah. Pascal yeah. yes about Pascal. yeah we both have the same name yeah. and that's why we, we <laughs> Kind of relate to each other. He loves the we, we lo he loved the idea when we'd meet in the corridors. He'd say, "Hello, Pascal. Hello, Pascal." He, uh, you're Pascal. Or no, I'm Pascal. P a s c h e l, and he's P a s c h e l. A lot of people leave the H out. Yeah. But in the case of Pascal Donahue and Pascal Mooney, we both have the H. We, it's the biblical spelling. It's the you know the Pascal Lamb and the whole lot. Uh, so so that's why I'm particularly pleased. Uh, that's a little snapshot of Dublin Central, which is Bertie Hearn's former constituency. So for Mary Fitzpatrick to be fighting for a seat there is kind of it's it's good. To to hear, I have to say. Now, Pascal, the good news for you and everyone else at home is that we're being told that the distribution of those uh, votes uh, from Murray and, of course, Sweeney, now we're going to hear about those in five minutes. It must have been tuned into Ocean FM. <laughs> <laughs> and just uh, 
to continue unless somebody has yeah. something local. Dublin Bay North, uh, Fine Gael, Richard Bruton, and there'll be a Hahi back in the doll, they say, Sean Hahi. And the, there's three other seats there with Finney and McGrath, Tommy Bruin, Labour, uh, sorry, uh, Tommy Bruin and Labour's Aidan O'Riordan are all battling for transfers. So um, Dublin Bay South, which has four seats, Fine Gael, Joan Murphy is topping the poll, followed by Fine Gael's Kate O'Connell. Some of your listeners will know she was in a ding dong battle with Lucinda. It looks as if Lucinda may be on a loser here. I can't say What's for sure. What's happening with Chris Andrews of Sinn Féin? I haven't seen that, but I can tell you the Greens, Eamon Ryan, and Labour's Kevin Humphrey are neck and neck for the final seat. Oh. They say Creighton is struggling, so if he's in that constituency, yeah. he's, he's uh, not doing Kevin well. Kevin Humphrey's the junior minister in the Department of Social Protection, and in my other life as um, Fianna Fáil spokesperson of Social Protection, I, I was the opposite side to Kevin, and uh, a very, very committed, sincere man, um, and uh, again, personally, I'm pleased that he's still in with a shout because his seat was in very serious difficulty. So not alone are we, does it look like we could have a McSharry in the doll, but we'll also have a Hahi. A Hahi, that's what they're to saying. The yeah, that basket. particular constituency, uh, again, it's another one of these things that happened. Uh, Deirdre Heaney, uh, who is an excellent Down Dublin front. City Councillor, are we up? Great. Yeah. Number six there, Francie. The following is the result of the second count which consisted of the distribution of Bernard Sweeney's votes of 129 and Eamon Murray's votes of 356. Bree Declan, plus 32, giving him a total of 3,282. 3,282. Cassidy Murray, non-party, plus 37, giving her a total of 2,763. 2763. Phelan Finbar, Rhea Ireland, plus six, giving him a total of 887, 887. Gallagher Nigel, Anti Austerity Alliance, People Before Profit, plus 35, giving him a total of 1803, 1803. Gokian Des, non party, plus 38, giving him a total of 1,098, 1,098. Kenny Martin, Sinn Féin, plus 63, giving him a total of 6,419, 6,419. McManus Chris, Sinn Féin, plus 39, giving him a total of 4,786, 4,786. McSharry Mark, Fianna Fáil, plus 18, giving him a total of 8,874, 8,874. McLaughlin Tony, Fine Gael, plus 32, giving him a total of 6,204, 6,204. O'Hara Burney, non-party, plus 36, giving her a total of 1,242, 1,242. O'Hora Leslie V. John, Green Party, Coenthus Glass, plus 16, giving him a total of 619, 619. O'Keefe Susan, the Labour Party, plus 14, giving her a total of 1,843, 1843. O'Rourke, Paddy, Fianna Fáil, plus 27, giving him a total of 5,474, 5,474. Perry John, Fine Gael, plus 10, giving him a total of 4,413, 4,413. Reynolds George, Fine Gael, plus 30, giving him a total of 6,702, 6,702. Scanlon Eamon, Fianna Fáil, plus 25, giving him a total of 5,899, 5,899. 
The non-transferable papers, not effective, 27. No candidate has reached the quota on this count. As there is no surplus for distribution, I will now exclude the lowest candidate and distribute his votes. Leslie V. John O'Hora, uh, 619 votes. The next count will consist of that. Thank you very much. Okay, it took a long time, as Fassel was saying, an hour and a half to get that second count. Um, yeah. How long is it going to take for the next one now? Because there's an extra 200 votes. Is it going to take them another uh, half an hour to we, count we, those up? We assume maybe they were working uh, ahead. I don't I, know. I know Marion was making a comment to me there about going everywhere, but I have to say that what stands out for me is Martin Kenny's 63 votes. Martin Kenny got the highest number of, of transfers off those two papers, yeah. uh, of all of the candidates. Uh, so again, uh, maybe it goes back to you, Marion, about the, uh, the breakdown. Of yeah, I, I had a, a quick look at uh, the two who were eliminated, and uh, there should be a greater percentage of the vote going to Leitrim and Cavan than there would to Sligo. Yeah. So, um, you know, that matters at the end of the day, because Murray, you know, had the bigger Mount 356. So I'm not surprised to see uh, 63 votes going to Kenny. You would have expected that. But there's no big shock. There's no big surprise here. No. And even at that, I'll, I'll do a quick look at it in a minute, but Kenny would have expected to get those votes. What did Reynolds get? He got, he got 30. 30. Reynolds got 30, yeah. yeah and I got 27. I reckon 60% of these votes approximately should have gone to Leitrim candidates, and I think that just about yes, happened. Right, okay. So there's so nothing... Nothing's really terribly significant significant about this particular count. No. Um, just, 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 sorry really to, sorry to interject, it's just been announced that Joan Burton has survived and has kept yeah. her seat in Dublin. Of uh, Sinn Féin, she was fighting yeah, with no, for the no, last she, seat. She, she's kept her seat. So that's Leo Varadkar. Uh, well, therefore, that would be the Ruth Coppinger. Oh, no, there's four Ruth seats Coppinger there. got through as well. So maybe it's Coppinger through as well. I think don't, so. Don't, don't ask me the ins and outs of that. I'm just... That's, <laughs> that, that particular, yeah. that's Dublin West. Uh, yeah. Leo Varadkar, uh, Castle Lock Base, Jack Chambers, Fianna Fáil candidate. Castle Lock based, uh, Ruth Coppinger, who'd be more down part of Blan Blanchardstown area, uh, who is the um, socialist that has succeeded okay. Joe yeah. from Kerry. Higgins. Joe Higgins, Higgins yeah. uh, succeeded him, and uh, Sinn Féin had high hopes of taking a seat there, Marion, if I remember. Yeah, yeah and, and uh, obviously Joan Donald. Burton just picked them, and just, because yeah, so it was another, between the two of them. So that's another uh, disappointment for Sinn Féin in Dublin, uh, okay. who would have been significantly ahead by, I think, something like... All right, so uh, Joan, Joan Burton stays as... Well, she, she stays in the doll. Whether she stays her leader or not, well, I don't know. Well, it depends on what happened to Alan Kelly down in Tipperary. Yeah. They would have and been the I think, I was saying, I thought he would do well enough. I, I think he, he probably will get through, but he's looking at a last seat. Yeah, okay. And yeah. um, also, in, if, if it is breaking news, that Enda Kenny has insisted he will not be resigning. So there you go. Um, as leader, as teacher, I, I, I presume as I presume as leader. Well, he'll have no choice to teach up. That's yeah. going to be a matter for the dog. Yeah, that, that, yeah that, so I presume he means as leader of. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's going again. to have to. Uh, they're going to have to go before the people, or go before the doll, and the new doll on the 10th of March. Okay. And they're going to have to figure out, uh, everybody will be nominating people as Taoiseach. Fianna Gael will nominate Enda as the outgoing Taoiseach. Fianna okay. Fáil will nominate Michal Martin. Sinn Féin will nominate Gerry Adams. And yeah. you never know that there might be the, Healy, the, the two Healy Ray brothers well, on the Kerry could nominate anything, each other as well. Could they're, they're um, capable of doing anything. I think, well, I, I thought uh, maybe Paul Drew O'Grady, returning officer, might have given us an indication of how long we'll be... Go on I, agree with you. I, I thought he might have maybe told because it is approaching 10 o'clock. We didn't get an indication. Oh, 11. I, I still yeah. believe from what I was told earlier. It, it, it won't go past 11. 11. Okay. 11. So we'll get what, two more counts at best, we if even. Well, we'll get one anyway. Well, based on well, the last one. Yeah, well, you, you just assume they're working ahead. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Right. Uh, Noel. No, no, there's nothing, there's nothing really I can nothing, add to what said. Major, I mean, yeah. those really was insignificant. Um, but I, I suppose this count should be a little bit quicker than the next one because there's only one candidate. Yeah. And maybe the fact that there was two candidates the last time might have uh, slowed up proceedings a small bit. So uh, I think we, we had to wait about nearly an hour and a half the last time. So I'd expect yeah. it okay. within well, an hour. Of course, um, 
Pascal, you were talking, you and Marion were talking about Leitrim votes and Leslie Hall, right? Yeah, 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 and based candidate, of course, is the breakdown. Yeah, even though he, he, has, um, he has Sligo connections, I think yeah, it's West Sligo he's from, but you, you talk for No, no, yeah. you, you have the breakdown there, I don't, of uh, O'Hara's. Uh, yeah, but I, I still have counties, to do the, the counties. The four counties, I thought we got that. Yeah, I still yeah. have to do the calculation, but I'm okay. saying I would have expected 60% of those votes to go in a Leitrim direction, so we'll just do a quick tot on it. I, I don't think we will get anything other than what we expected. Okay. 60% yeah, percent and go, this go is to, Leslie, to Leitrim. Yeah, okay. This is Leslie O'Hora, who Leslie is O'Hora. Carrick and Shannon based, yeah. and uh, who got 440 votes in Leitrim. Um, he would have got, uh, rather interestingly, 50 or 60 down in, 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 in North Leitrim. Um, I'm just looking to see what his vote was in Carrick and Shannon, which was his home base, which wasn't very significant, actually. At all, uh, 13, 18, yeah. uh, 30 votes. That's what he pulled out of. 32 votes he pulled out of um, out of Carrick and Shannon. Um, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. I'm looking at, at O'Hara. Uh, the uh, yeah, it's going to it's going to be a little similar pattern, Niall. Looking at the uh, distribution of the O'Hara Green Party vote across Leitrim, uh, it's all in single digits. Uh, he picked yeah. up a vote in practically every polling station. Uh, so this is going to be spread all over the place, I would suggest. Um, and the remaining, uh, what is this? The remaining 400 votes that he has. Uh, again, they're going to. Uh, this is going to be similar, I think. From just a quick overview, Niall, this distribution is going to be similar. I think it's going to go all over the place. Yeah. So we're not expecting any much Nothing more from the, from the third. I don't think there will be anything significant. But certainly from the Leitrim perspective, he only has 200 and, uh, 210 votes to distribute. Okay. Uh, among the three, four Leitrim candidates, that includes Bernie O'Hara, who's still in the fight, of course. Okay. Yeah, and it will be interesting to see again how many of those will go to Kenny, because if if yeah. Kenny keeps oh, yeah, inching left. ahead, yeah, so, yeah. if Kenny keeps inching ahead, he's yeah. just that little bit further ahead than Chris yeah. McManus. We would have Chris to McManus assume. McManus got 39. Yes. That time, yes. and Kenny got 60. 63. Yeah, you're right, Marion. I think we have to assume that uh, of the 200 and whatever votes that there are from Leitrim, that again Martin Kenny is going to benefit. Yeah. Okay. Based on the last. All right, a- Adrian Flood is as texting, and I've been. I was. It was out for a toy break a moment ago, and I don't know. Many people ask me this question: Do the panel now believe? Well, they do. Some of them believe that there's a very real possibility of two Sligo, two Leitrim TDs, and I presume they mean Sligo Town. Base TDs and two Leitrim TDs. Well, I can't rule out Evan Scanlon, and and uh, unless unless there's a change in Fine Gael that Noel might have an insight into, um, that maybe Tony McLaughlin could find himself behind Terry Reynolds yeah. uh, or, or too close to him, that the distribution of uh, Paddy O'Rourke's votes would boost him over. But I still, we're still looking at the totality of the vote that Sligo is. Yeah, it's ball. still down to, I still think you're it's looking numbers, at... Numbers, numbers. Numbers, I think Sligo is still looking at three and numbers each game. one at Okay, um, as I said, third count is the distribution of um, Leslie O'Hora's vote, and then the next out will be uh, Finbar Fylan, it's not right? Yes, yeah. you're right. And again, that's... that's uh, Again, that's Re- not well, we won't say it's insignificant, but reason. Well, I'll tell you what might be significant about his distribution is how many is Chris McManus going to pick up? Yeah. Because this is a like, Sligo Town vote. It is. Yeah. It's, it's a 900 vote, so that to be, I mean, Chris will yes. need to pull in some of that. Yes. So um, that could signify. Right, no. Yeah. No. Well, I, 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 I think. Um, um, Finbar Finan's vote is, is a right wing vote. I can see very little of it going to the left, really. And I think Fine Gael will probably do best out of it. So no, no geography at all there, you think? No? Well, I think it'll stay in Sligo, uh, by and large. Uh, Sligo Town based candidate. But I think Fine Gael will probably do best out of it, and, and Fianna Fáil. I mean, I can't see it travelling too far to Sinn Féin. I think, yeah, you could yeah. be right about that, but what will be interesting to see is who will do best out of it, because we have to realise where Renua came from as well, you know, so... Um, oh, but, but you could be right, Noel, yeah. there. You could be right. John. What we're, what we're looking at in this transfer, according to my reading of this, we have 289 votes here that O'Hora got in County Sligo. Yeah. And that's going to give us an indication there as to how they are transferring to 
for want of a better word, to the left. Uh, how much Gallagher and Bree are going to take on those? And then is there a possibility that they may make their way back to Chris McManus after that? But this is certainly going to give us an indication combined. But it's, it's an individual indication this time. Because the last time we had Leitrim and Sligo both interconnected on it. This time, 209 in Leitrim, 289 in Sligo. So we'll get a better idea on the transfers on it. This time. Incidentally, going back to the national situation, Inda Kenny could theoretically remain as caretaker government for quite a number of months before this issue could be settled. Because there'll be so many negotiations going on and um, talks about talks and so forth. The constitutional right of the president will ask them to, each. he could ask each party to look at the possibility of forming a government and in the meantime the present government will remain in a caretaker capacity. Yes, in okay. other words, in other words, uh, in other words, what what John is saying is absolutely correct. Under the constitution, um, the uh, Fianna Fáil leader, the Taoiseach, Enda Kenny, could report back to the president, having been asked to form a government, that he has been unable to form a government, yeah. and he may then ask the uh, the leader of Fianna Fáil to make the attempt to form a government. Uh, but remember, there is uh, a precedent for for this as well. Um, in that Albert Reynolds uh, tendered his resignation without calling an election. So yeah. uh, anything is possible uh, okay. in terms of uh, asking who to form what. Okay, I see uh, Labour Junior Minister Anne Feeling has lost her seat as well. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, she, I mean, she, she walked out of that. Um, she did, yeah. And, the, and, the radio and, and I people. served on the British Irish Parliamentary Assembly and uh, we got to know each other very, very well. A very committed, um, a very warm hearted person. I'm talking on a human level because, you know, listeners probably feel that maybe all the political parties are at, at odds with each other and battling each other, but within the context of Leinster House, you do forge relationships and friendships, uh, and, you know, you do admire the stance some people take, maybe if you don't agree with their policies. So Anne Phelan uh, is, is a great, great loss. She was the Junior Minister for Rural Affairs, and I think it was a belated appointment by the government, to be honest with you, uh, that probably didn't help her at all. And you're right, she got into an argy-bargy with, uh, with uh, people yeah. on local radio. But not only that, with the loss of Anne Phelan, uh, the Labour Party have now lost a seat that was held there for a considerable length of time by Seamus Patterson, the former Count Corla. Uh, from from Carlo, from Kilkenny. Okay, um, I see uh, Robert Troy elected in in, um, in in Longford Westmead. Yes. On on the first count. Anything on Willie Penrose? Uh, no, Willie Penrose is in trouble, as we heard, and Emmett Stagg is in trouble as well. Um, and the Kenny's been on the nine o'clock news, saying he has a duty and responsibility as Taoiseach to see whatever necessary action should be taken to provide the country with a stable government once all the counts have been completed, and that. Um, he hoped it would be possible to put a government together. So bearing out, I suppose, what John said there. Sorry, Mary. Just a small one there, Niall, and again, it's only a tiny, tiny shift, but remember, Pascal, we were looking at where we thought these votes would go, given that, that Murray was the major one here from Cavan, and expecting Cavan and Leitrim to stay together. We would have expected 60% of these transfers, approximately, for Leitrim, and um, about 40 for Sligo, or 42. And actually, when you look at it, um, more than 50% went to Sligo candidates, and and so there was a slight shift towards the Sligo candidates. Now, you know, there's people on borders and, and all of that, but it, it, it just went slightly against the trend. So there was actually more of a vote went to Sligo from those two eliminations than we might have expected. Um, about 24 more votes, uh, more actually. Um, Leitrim, I think, got about 210, Sligo 234. But remember now you've got the likes of Bernie O'Hara who straddles the, the you know, but even at that, you might have expected a few more to go to Leitrim. So if that is replicated in other counts, it strengthens the hand of the Sligo candidates. Fair, yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so as it's each small numbers. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. But uh, as each count progresses and the elimination of the lesser candidates in term number term numerical terms, mm. uh, it'll become more and more significant as the figures build up. If it happens. But for the moment, uh, it's only a start that, now. That, yeah, we would agree that even this elimination may not necessarily signify. Yes, that's right. absolutely. Okay. Just for those of you that are hanging on by your fingertips and saying, "What's going to happen in the next elimination?" We don't think that it's going to do much to decide to decide the overall. The overall thing. Okay. No, no. It's coming up to ten o'clock. Um, we'll speak for a few more minutes and we'll take our ten o'clock break. And um, as, as Pascal, I think Pascal and John are both of the opinion that we may adjourn. And I see some counts are now adjourning for the evening. So maybe there's a precedent being set. Maybe we might we might get out of here at eleven o'clock and, and start all over again tomorrow. I don't know because there, there is going to be no result of any significance tonight, John. Uh, definitive at the moment, but I do expect I do expect that the count here will be adjourned after this count. After that's, this count. That's my own personal feeling right. on this. Okay. Yes, Mary. An interesting statistic nationally, somebody has just sent to me so far, the percentage of female TVs, as you know, we had a quota. So yeah. far, uh, they reckon it's between 15 and 19 percent. Uh, I think it was, was it 13 or 14 percent last time out, so it's so far not a huge lift, but it's early days yet, early you know. Days, yeah. um, an, an increase, but not maybe not significant, no, no. considering the, the uh, fairly dramatic... Um, Rules brought in in relation to gender quotas. That's right, but and we still we still have a long yeah. way to go. But it's not it's not going to get near it, uh, I yeah. think. But you know, obviously, look. I suppose it's stupid of me to say that because I don't know where it's going to no, go because we don't no, know. It's interesting. And yeah. one, of, one of the talking points we mentioned earlier was. Um, you know, it wasn't a great day for the, the women in Sligo Leitrim. Oh no, it all. wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. It, it really wasn't. And like for female candidates to get somewhere between 15 and 19 percent would be very low compared to European standards. Yeah. We were one of the lowest, as it were, at that. We were lower than lots of sub-Saharan -Sahar African countries. You know, so if if we're still at that, we're we're well down. But it's it's really too early to tell. But 20 percent in, if that's what it's showing, is it? Going to change significantly, or would would you know maybe some of the females maybe end up getting some of the final seats? Hard to know, Niall. Hard okay. to know. Let's take our ten o'clock uh, break. We're back again in a few minutes in the Clarion Hotel for the third count. Hopefully, not too long to wait for the third count.
Barry Hotel, um, we, have, we have Harry Keane lined up with, with Councillor Barry Neal, we'll come to him in a moment, but just to give, again, people like to know this, uh, we're waiting the third count here in Sligo Leitrim, um, which is the uh, distribution of Leslie O'Hoare's vote, um, and Pascal has been up talking to the official part of the himself, and you estimate there'll be 15 minutes more for the next count? Yes. Yeah, and then we'll be adjourning at about 11 o'clock tonight. That's the plan. That's the plan. But depending on, on the fact that there should get another, they're going to announce another count, yeah. obviously, uh, so after we, this one, so, so they may go beyond. So we, beyond. we might get two more counts in, and then there'll be that for the now, night. Can I also uh, let our listeners know, uh, we might have to rant about the delays, I think Marion had made the point that it could have been to do with the fact there were two candidates, and it is. It was. It was because yeah. there were two candidates, they had to be meticulous, and they had to do a, to a recheck. Not just having done it, the process once, as we explained earlier, yeah. of the add-ons, but they actually rechecked again, okay. just to get it right. And that's what the delay was. Yeah. And in fact, you didn't realise it took an hour. Yeah. And, I said it was and, and forgive me, I should have mentioned all the good wishes and compliments that have come your way all day. I haven't mentioned that at all, just to, just to make you all aware Thank of that. Thank you very much. How Thanks much our people listeners. deeply appreciate all you're doing and what you're telling people. And uh, we're snowed under with texts and calls and emails, I can tell you. Okay, uh, let's go to uh, Harry Keeney, who's uh, on the floor of the count. Now, let's do it. Um, Harry, and he's with uh, Councillor Barry O'Neill, Fine Gael Councillor Barry O'Neill. Harry. Do you believe that? I'm here with uh, Barry O'Neill, uh, Fine Gael uh, Councillor in South Donegal. First of all, Barry, just give me your overall view of the results here in Sligo Leitrim so far. I think it's very interesting, Harry. Um, a fabulous result for Mark McSharry and Fianna Fáil. Um, a very good result for Tony McLaughlin so far, and I think Tony's going to survive. And uh, I think there's a real battle royale there for Sinn Féin, and I, I do believe that if uh, Chris McManus holds on in uh, Sligo Town ahead of Martin Kenny, I, I think that it could be on the Leitrim side of things, it could work well for Jerry Reynolds in the long run. So I think that Fine Gael could come out of here with two seats, which would be a fantastic result for the party. Now, I recall, Barry, you proposed John Perry at the uh, Fine Gael Convention right, yeah. in Drumshambo. Unfortunately, things haven't turned out too well for John here today. Are you disappointed? Ah, yeah. Jo John has been, I suppose, a public representative since 1997. He served uh, Sligo Leitrim very, very well. He had done a lot of work on the ground in South Donegal in this election. Uh, I feel sorry for John and for his family in particular today and uh, you know it wasn't just to be for John and uh, as I say maybe the three candidate strategy in the end it wasn't meant to be a strategy as such but you know the, the way it worked out maybe you know two seats two candidates you know would have been better for Fine Gael and maybe what happened on Drum Shambo that night and what happened there I remember that night uh, a lot of things that happened shouldn't have happened and Maybe John Perry and, uh, you know, going back even further than that to local branches and stuff not being properly registered. I think you can go right back to the roots as regards, uh, you know, what's happened to John. Uh, but as I say, he's an incredible person and I, I was proud to uh, present John to the uh, convention in Drumshambo. I'm good friends with John, I'm good friends with Tony, good friends with Jerry. And uh, as I say, I think that by the end of tomorrow night here, I do believe that uh, Fine Gael could be coming out of here with two seats, as, as to say out of four would be a great result for, for Fine Gael in, South, in, in Sligo Leach with South Donegal West Cavan. Would you go so far as to say that the uh, result of the election uh, as we see it as of now vindicates Fine Gael party headquarters strategy and approach? I'm not too sure really you know like to, I think just that night in Drumshambo I just think that there was a lot of confusion and I think that even before that too I, I just I don't know I, I just think that there was a lot of mistakes made and I, I believe that the party needs to learn a lot from that. Generally in Irish politics you get that with any party. You know, you look at Donegal constituency today and see what's happening with Sinn Féin. They ran three candidates and they're only going to get one seat. Padraig McLaughlin, one of the highest profile politicians in the country with the banking tribunal and everything else. And, and there he is tonight. He's going to be fighting tomorrow night uh, for the last seat with Thomas Pringle. And the way it's looking, it could be Thomas Pringle's seat uh, come tomorrow night. And, you know, and then you look at the Fianna Fáil situation in Donegal. Pat the Cope Goller. Someone asked me in Dublin during the week, would, would Pat the Cope make it? And I said he will make it because Pat the Cope in Donegal is a brand and he really has upset the apple tart in, in, in Donegal as regards you know, where the seats were going to go. All the predictions got it wrong. Uh, two seats up there, but as I say, the Sinn Féin vote management in Donegal 
adding the third Gary Doherty in Finn Valley has really uh, not served Sinn Féin well and if they do get the seat tomorrow night if Padre McLaughlin survives ahead of Thomas Pringle so all parties have made mistakes in this election and, and you just get that in Irish politics and I suppose that's the beauty of politics that's the beauty of polls that's the beauty of predictions uh, but I think here in Sligo Leitrim it's been a it's been a very good campaign for all the parties and all the candidates I think it you know there's no one can leave here any of the candidates from um, Eamon Murray and Black Lion to Marie Castley and Grange having watched the two Ocean M FM debates online last week I, I just thought that the quality of candidate across the board in Sligo Leitrim you know that it was a very very good campaign and it was well fought and uh, I think that respectability to politics and Irish politics is sometimes called into question but I think that in this constituency the biggest constituency in the country and that's going to be borne out here tomorrow night it's going to go down to the wire uh, but I say I will be back in Jerry Reynolds that if Chris McManus gets elected in Sligo that Jerry Reynolds uh, will see that Leitrim vote. There has to be a Leitrim uh, TD after this election and, and I do believe that uh, you know, if the ball bounces right for Reynolds uh, Perry's transfer will be crucial uh, Scanlon if he goes out of the race, Paddy O'Rourke, like, all that will, will work in his favour and I say the Sinn Féin one could be the big one. Having looked there at some of the uh, transfers that's doing it now, it's very noticeable from the transfers, I think this will be key, having listened to uh, Senator Pascal Mooney today and to uh, Noel Murrick and to John who's done a great job today with Niall. They're talking about the 8,000 uh, Sligo Town transfers and looking at the, the ballot papers there would end the Madloin there, there's a lot of one, two, three, fours for Green and Independence, uh, non-party candidates, down as far as five. So if that transfers into a bigger picture, the bigger parties mightn't see a big transfer because, as we were saying earlier, you get these plump votes. A lot of anti-government votes there, but there's no votes there either for, for uh, either Sinn Féin or Fianna Fáil, which is extraordinary, looking at those uh, transfer papers, looking down at the one, two, threes, four, fives, and what has been uh, distributed there at present. So I do think that there's a seat in Leitrim, and uh, it's going to be a battle royale, I think, here tomorrow. And uh, as I say, I do believe that Jerry Reynolds is in with a great shout here of taking a second Fianna Gael seat based on, on those Leitrim transfers and the Perry transfer is going to be key. If, if, if uh, Jerry Reynolds takes any between 25-30% in that transfer, even Tony McLaughlin has taken 25%, uh, I think that it, it, it further enhances Jerry Reynolds' chances of staying ahead of Scanlon and also uh, the Sinn Féin factor then, the Leitrim people, the one, two, three, fours in Leitrim, uh, that's going to benefit uh, Jerry Reynolds and I think that Jerry Reynolds is in with a great chance here tomorrow of taking that second seat for Fine Gael, which could have a great great impact on the national picture when it comes down if Fine Gael are going to have 49 seats or 50 seats. These seats are going to be crucial and looking at the, the national picture today, there tonight on TV and listening to the, the other radio stations across the country, uh, Fine Gael uh, are starting, Andrew Doyle and Wicklow, is, is looks like he's going to get that last seat. They're going to be crucial seats if Fine Gael are going to get over the 50 mark nationally. So it's going to be an intriguing day tomorrow but I, I think overall uh, the political landscape after this election will mirror the 2007 uh, election as regards seats for Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael. Not much between them. How are we going to form a government or who's going to form a government? Uh, that's going to be the, the big question. Will Enda Kenny survive as Taoiseach? I think he will. I think Enda has been a fighter for 14 years. I think he's led the party since 2002 uh, through great times. He's facing a big challenge now. Uh, but. I'm not too sure, uh, obviously, what's going to happen in the national picture, but one thing's for sure is that uh, Fine Gael are going to get those uh, loose seats around the country that could make a big difference to that national picture. And staying with that national picture, Barry, what do you say to uh, people who would uh, assert that the slogan, let's keep the recovery going, was perhaps the wrong slogan, and it may have actually been the cause of you losing votes in this election? Well, I've heard a lot of Fine Gael people saying that today, but the funny thing about it, they weren't saying it a week ago or five days ago, so it's easy talking now. But in saying that, it, you know, to the rural Ireland and to rural towns like my hometown of Ballyshannon, it, that wasn't resonating with the voters and you know Fine Gael probably should have had a better slogan of you know let's keep stability going you know I think the message uh, at the beginning of the campaign from Fine Gael stability or chaos I think that was a better message to the voters uh, to try and keep keep uh, you know them in government to continue the recovery but I think uh, it was a wee bit uh, boisterous it was a wee bit over uh, 
ambitious, we say not, to rural parts of the country in particular that haven't felt any type of the recovery. So, yeah, I, I, I fought the national election myself back in 2011, the Donegal South West, the famous by-election. I finished second to Pierce Doherty. And uh, in that election, I got first-hand experience of uh, national party politics and advisors and telling you the right thing to say and not the right thing to say, etc. And to be honest, uh, sometimes I think from my experience in a national election, which is a very national election back then because it was the, 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 the pre-runner to the, the, the big election of 2011, it was nine months before that, I would always say to candidates, now be yourself. Uh, you know, these political advisors are grand and all the rest, but they've never experienced what it's like uh, to sit in a clinic. They've never experienced what it's like to go to the doorstep in many cases. They've never experienced what it's like uh, to sit before a town hall meeting where a post office is under threat or where a guard station is under threat and how to communicate with the people. So in most cases, I would find in my 11 years in council politics, having came through three local elections and having came through a gruesome election two years ago, when Fine Gael were making, uh, I suppose, harder decisions on water charges and property taxes at that time I, I firmly believe that any candidate in any party you know they should they should listen to themselves they should listen to their hearts and be themselves and I think that that message about the recovery I think it was definitely another offside and I think it, it, it has it wasn't the right message to get out there particularly in the closing days of the campaign but in saying that um, I do believe that um, Fine Gael will be responsible and uh, I do believe if, if they can win enough of those, as I would call them, loose seats around the country, uh, that Andy Kenny will be Taoiseach in the next couple of weeks. Harry O'Neill, thank you very much for speaking to me. Thanks, Harry. OK, thanks for that, Harry. Thanks for that, Barry. I must say that was very, very insightful from Barry O'Neill and very, very strong opinions. And Barry O'Neill seems to be very, very confident that Jerry Reynolds is going to deliver for Fianna Gael and that Leitrim is uh, going to hang on to two seats. Well, Marion and I have been number crunching here and uh, I would have to admit that the edge would be with Jerry Reynolds as we speak because we're concerned a little about um, how transfer-friendly Eamon Scanlon is going to be in Sligo. Uh, and the fact that there is going to be almost 6,000 of Paddy O'Rourke's votes okay. that are going to be distributed. So, and Marion has a view on that too. My view would be that um, if you look at the Sligo vote and think it's going to remain largely in Sligo, then that's fine for Eamon, but that is not necessarily the case, and it depends on how transfer-friendly Eamon is. Maybe the edge is with Jerry Reynolds, but it will come down to Perry's votes, where they go. And, yeah. and again, I was talking to, to Pascal, uh, you know, about O'Rourke's votes. How many of those will go to Eamon Scanlon? Yeah. I, I just don't know. I have no idea. Uh, but you did say Eamon was actively canvassing number twos in Leitrim. He was. So, you know, maybe if he gets the chunk of them. But the truth is, for Eamon to be safe, he needs okay. a good transfer from Perry and a very good transfer from O'Rourke. Okay. Yes. But we still have to wait the, the Sligo Town vote. If it keeps edging in his favour, it'll, it'll ease him. But it, He needs to be picking. That's where yeah. the original yeah. point right. is. he transfer friendly okay. with Let, that Sligo right. Town Let's go to transfers? Our next Claire Mulcahy is on the floor. She's talking to Enda McGlone. Uh, and I'm joined here now by Enda McGlone. And uh, you've been having a look at the figures, I know, um, as a former uh, councillor in, in Leitrim, you're, you're well used to the elections. The next elimination, I suppose, that's taking place is um, Leslie O'Hora. Um, can you see, obviously, a couple of those are going to go to Jerry Reynolds, but actually not, based on the tallies, not that many? No, I think what I understand, uh, about 40 votes. Leslie, of course, is based in uh, Carrigan and Shannon, as Jerry Reynolds is, but... Uh, uh, they'd be on, uh, I suppose, different viewpoints on certain issues, uh, fracking being one, uh, I'd imagine, so that might uh, have uh, issues there in terms of uh, transfer. But anyways, I suppose uh, I'd respect the Green vote will transgress across uh, a lot of the candidates. Probably won't make a significant difference to the overall situation till we get further down into uh, the bulky votes uh, that has to come. And I suppose um, the next, the most significant, or the, the next most significant, the most significant um, elimination will probably be Declan Bree. Um, one would expect that maybe a lot of those would stay in this in this in the Sligo area. Um, how do you, how do you see that panning out, and how do you see things working out for the Fine Gael um, candidate? Well, um, when Declan Bree is eliminated, of course, his vote will have expanded at that stage because uh, he, at the moment he's the head of Marie Casserly, he's the head of Finbar Filan. 
he's ahead of Nigel Gallagher and um, also I'm just looking down to see any more of the Sligo based candidates yeah Susan O'Keefe so there's probably in the region of about seven seven and a half thousand you know there's there's a lot of votes there going around and uh, at that point when Declan Bree is eliminated um, you know I'd imagine it will help Chris McManus significantly um, whether it helps him sufficiently to um, be ahead of Martin Kenny I suppose that's the question that a lot of people are asking themselves here at the count and I don't have the answer to that and I don't think many other people have the answer to that but that's sort of one of the ponderables here uh, that's that's facing the count tomorrow and I suppose if we could look into the crystal ball now at this moment Claire and be able to tell us what happens to those votes we'd probably be able to name the four seats that's really the issue I think um, if you were to call it between one of the Fine Gael candidates, between maybe Jerry Reynolds or Tony McLaughlin, um, do you think, based on the figures, it's clear who, who might be um, stronger? Well, I suppose Tony is sitting, I suppose, in the town. He's been a base, town-based councillor since 1974, and uh, like he has a very, been a very successful public representative over many years. So I suppose in terms of the eliminations that are happening, the bulk of them are all Sligo-based, North Sligo-based. So I would expect Tony will benefit more than Jerry Reynolds will. Um, the, the, the eliminations that Jerry Reynolds will be interested in will particularly be Paddy O'Rourke's and John Perry's, as will Tony as well be looking at John Perry. So um, it's difficult at this stage to come down on who will gain the most. I'd, I'd expect Tony will gain more than Jerry Reynolds will, but there is a gap between the two candidates as they stand uh, presently. Um, but uh, you know, I'm being told by sources here that there'll be a strong vote to Jerry Reynolds from Paddy O'Rourke. Um, I looked earlier today on your website the vote that was coming back in West Cavan, where Paddy uh, O'Rourke had a very good vote, and Jerry Reynolds was second in that. And, you know, the interesting point there is that if the same line follows in preferences, uh, then obviously Jerry will benefit directly from Paddy O'Rourke in that sense. Uh, so it's, um, I, I, just, I think it's just too close to call, but both of them have advantages and both have disadvantages. So I suppose I'm sitting on the fence, to be honest. I know it's been, it's a tough day, you know, for, for John Perry. Um, he's seen his vote, his first preferences halved, um, yeah. essentially. Do you think um, the whole, where do you think that came from? Like, do you think there was, it, you know, there was a feeling that there could have been a little bit of a sympathy vote there after the court case and he took the case against Fine Gael, but obviously people are just, it's very unhappy with the government parties today and that's clear. Is that showing locally here as well? Ah, obviously it is, you know, the swings and roundabouts and as far as the swings are concerned, you know, we weren't getting them today and uh, look, regardless of the court case or anything, I suppose we were going to suffer and, um, you know, that's the basic reason for it. We have a couple of harsh decisions to make in government and, you know, government sometimes is, it's great to be. Mary Harney said your, your worst day in, uh, in government is, is better than your best day in opposition and you get a lot of things done, but given that this government had to take almost 20 billion out of the economy in the first four years of government, uh, you know, you, you, there was a lot of dogs that were kicked on the way down and we're paying for that now. But otherwise, if this wasn't done, then perhaps the country would be in a far worse state. But that's government and that's tough decisions have to be made sometimes. Uh, people would argue their fairness of them or otherwise. That's probably a matter for another day. But certainly the effect of austerity, I suppose, had a direct impact on Fine Gael and Labour for that matter. But that's government and that's the way it is and you have to move on and accept it. Okay, Enda McGlone, listen, thanks a million for talking to us. No thanks to Claire and thanks to Enda. Um, about a minute away from the third count, um, which we'll take live, so stay with us. Um, we'll stay live for that. I see Mick Wallace is in a bit of bother down in his constituency. Um, Claire Daly has been elected. Um, yeah, I was talking earlier, by the way, in the other constituency that Marion was on about, and uh, naturally enough, we'll break as soon as the, the count is coming up. Uh, but just in the context of Dublin Bay North, which is a new five seat constituency, uh, where Sean Hawhey seems to have taken a seat. What I found rather interesting there is that uh, Tommy Bruin, the former Labour TD, is fighting for a seat, uh, whereas I would have thought that he probably would have been uh, a shoe in. Uh, Finian McGrath, I'm not at all surprised. He's got a huge profile, very hard-working independent, comes originally from Galway, a teacher in, in, uh, in Dublin in that particular constituency. But what I am a little disappointed about is Deirdre Heaney, I was just about to refer to her earlier, 
uh, a very hard working city councillor, has Leitrim connections uh, through marriage and um, was the candidate that was selected at the Fianna Fáil Convention uh, and then Sean Hawley was added subsequently. We're going, we're going to go to, um, the following is the result of the third count which consisted of the distribution of Leslie V. John O'Hora's votes of 619. Bree Declan plus 65, giving him a total of 3,347, 3,347. Cassidy Marie, non-party, plus 60, giving her a total of 2,823. Filan Finbar, Rianua, Ireland, plus 26, giving him a total of 913, 913. Gallagher Nigel, Anti-Austerity Alliance, People Before Profit, plus 87, giving him a total of 1,890, 1,890. Gokey and Des, non-party, plus 20, giving him a total of 1,118, 1,118. Kenny Martin, Sinn Féin, plus 20, giving him a total of 6,439, 6,439. McManus, Chris, Sinn Féin, plus 23, giving him a total of 4,809. McSharry, Mark, Fianna Fáil, plus 19, giving him a total of 8,893, 8,893. McLaughlin, Tony, Fine Gael, plus 33, giving him a total of 6,237, 6,237. O'Hara Burney, non-party, plus 23, giving her a total of 1,265, 1,265. O'Keefe Susan, the Labour Party, plus 143, giving her a total of 1,986, 1,986. O'Rourke Paddy, Fianna Fáil, plus 12, giving him a total of 5,486, 5,486. Perry John, Fine Gael, plus 18, giving him a total of 4,431, 4,431. Reynolds, Jared, Fine Gael, plus 40, giving him a total of 6,742, 6,742. Mm -hmm. Scanlon Eamon, Fianna Fáil, plus eight, giving him a total of 5,907, 5,907. Non-transferable papers not effective, 22. No candidate has reached the quota on this count. As there is no surplus for distribution, I will now exclude the lowest candidate and distribute his votes. Finan uh, Finbar, 913 votes, and the next count will consist of the distribution of those votes. Thank you. Okay, so there you go. That's the uh, third count. Um, I get no indication from, from Patrick O'Grady that um, we we're going to have one more count or he's going to finish up at whatever time. Um, I'm just looking at those uh, figures, Pascal. Um, 143 to Susan O'Keefe. Yeah, that's an impressive transfer, which in other circumstances probably would have been significant for her. But what is uh, standing out there is Jerry Reynolds picking up 40. I think that that was, apart from Declan Bree and Marie Casserly uh, and Gallagher was in Sligo Town, when you put them together, it's interesting that um, one would have expected that Declan, Marie and um, Nigel would have picked up that vote. But when you look down the remainder of the candidate sheet, the highest, the next highest after Susan O'Keefe is uh, Jerry Reynolds on 40. He picked up 40 transfers. Uh, Eamon Scanlon didn't do well there. In fact, he had one of the lowest transfers, and that goes back to what we were saying earlier. The question is, how transfer-friendly is Eamon with yeah. the shake-up of the Sligo-based candidates' distribution? Well, in fact, he had the lowest transfer of all. Absolutely, yeah, on, on ace. Uh, which is, uh, which is uh, I'd say, a little bit disturbing in that I would have thought that he would have picked up more. I mean, even uh, Mark Rancheri took 19 uh, of that transfer. Um, but overall, 
Uh, that was a left, no question, but that was a left transfer. I mean, yeah. Susan O'Keefe, Declan Bree, uh, and um, Nigel Gallagher uh, between them yeah. uh, picked up around 200. And yeah, which, which some, some people might find surprising because there is a Green Party vote, so it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean. Well, it was on the left. Yeah. They seemed to be on the left, I think. I don't know. I don't know if Leslie O'Hara will consider him a left left wing candidate or not. Um, no, but the Greens would be seen to be, let's say, left of centre rather than. Although many of their policies, of course, has become mainstream now, and all the parties have have picked their colours. Okay, John, your your thoughts on that? My immediate my immediate reaction to that, and given that, uh, and I very much accept what uh, Pascal has said there about Eamon Scanlon. But let's come back to that for a moment because. What I'm looking at here, what's clear from this, is that Sinn Féin don't seem to be transfer friendly from that type of vote. They have only 43 votes between the two of them, between Kenny and McManus, uh, on that. And if that trend is to continue amongst the candidates that are to be eliminated from Leitrim, then it shows that McManus's chances of catching uh, Kinney are much more remote than what we thought at that. So, but again, it's it, it's just my feeling at this moment. It's okay. a, it could be an indication. John, okay. John, do you would you John just to pick up on that? Would you be suggesting then that Declan Bree's what could be three and a half thousand minimum, uh, or maybe even closer to four thousand? In fact, it will be closer to four thousand when you take uh, Phelan and Gallagher out of the equation. Uh, that that four thousand votes might that Sinn Féin might not be transfer friendly for a significant bulk of that vote out of Sligo Town. That Chris McManus wouldn't do as well as perhaps we're thinking? I mean, I, he, certainly, he certainly will. He'll do well from Breeze transfers, but remember that uh, of that he would want to be getting 1,500 of those. He would want a 50% transfer from Bree. And who else is in it at that uh, at that stage? McMa- uh, McSharry will, will be bound to be benefiting from those uh, Bree votes as well in the town, as will McLaughlin. Uh, so, given that, given that, that 50 percent of 4,000, 2,000 votes at that time uh, could very well leave McManus up with uh, equal to uh, or above Kenny at that stage. But again, I think Kenny will come back and. All right. Uh, someone has uh, someone has tweeted in to say John Comiskey was missed in the woods at the Five Mile Town rally today. Well, there's several places that I can be missed, but certainly we're in the woods here, and the fire is only starting to light yet. Right, there'll be no rallying this weekend, so um, so for, if we take if we take on board what Pascal has said and what you said as well, John, uh, both of you are of the mind now to, to suggest that there are going to be, or there could be very well, two Leitrim TDs. Yes, it, it, could, it, could, very, it could very well. I'm, I'm, I'm at this stage too inclined to bring, we were right enough Paddy O'Rourke, um, perhaps maybe a little bit prematurely. Were we writing Paddy off a little bit prematurely? Um, maybe not, but again... No, Noel doesn't see it that way at all, no. No, I, I, I think Paddy is just that bit far, you know, he's about 500 votes probably too far behind to be uh, in with a shout at this stage. But given but the fact that Eamon Scanlon hasn't been polling well there on that last instant there, and Paddy O'Rourke, uh, there's the Guckian transfer, there's the O'Hara transfer, uh, Certainly, certainly, there's a possibility of Paddy O'Rourke catching him in Scanlon. Uh, we're, we're discussing. I know. Oh, yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be opposed to that notion, uh, John. Uh, looking at the figures, uh, five four eight six, Scanlon and five nine. Um, it's four hundred plus 
Paddy would have to pick up a significant transfer out of the people you're talking about to be able to do that. But then it raises another question, is that if Eamon Scanlon were to end up being eliminated before Paddy O'Rourke, which I don't really honestly think no. it's going to happen, yeah. well then it raises a whole lot of other questions. Uh, but I, I can't, John, I can't see it. No, no one can't see it either. No, no, I mean, I, I think Paddy O'Rourke is about 500. I think John only does it for development now and again, just to, to like it. Possible. No, there's the possibility of it happening. But he's a leader man at heart, and I suppose maybe that there's a bit of that in it. But I think Paddy O'Rourke, uh, you know, to be realistic about the thing, I think Paddy O'Rourke is 500 votes uh, shy of uh, any possibility of that happening. And I, I still go back to what I'm saying all day is that we cannot underest, underestimate the changes that the Sligo Eliminations is going to make. There's Susan O'Keefe, there's Nigel Gallagher, uh, Declan Bree, yeah. and uh, Marie Castellet. And I mean, you know, that's going to be hugely significant for the Sligo candidates. Absolutely. And I, 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 I just cannot see a situation. I mean, I'd be more inclined, if I had to call it an at this stage, to be 3-1, three, 3 Sligo TDs and 1 Leitrim, but I think that will totally depend, as I said earlier, it'll totally depend on what happens in Sinn Féin. If, if, if you know, I, 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 I think we have to wait and see. Yeah, it's funny that it's not, now the shift is towards the Sinn Féin dynamic, yeah. uh, rather than the Fianna Fáil one. Right, so that's the her count done and dusted, um, and the four count is the elimination of um, transfer of, of uh, Finbar filing votes of uh, 913. <laughs> I think Noel made the point earlier on that because of the background, Renew and all of that, that um, his votes may go towards for the game. Yeah, that was what Noel suggested earlier. Um, well, because of the whole renewal of Fee Well, no, not, not go to Fine Gael because of the renewal connection. Is that what you're saying? No, no, oh, what, I, what I said earlier is that they wouldn't go to the left. Yeah, they um, go to the left. You know, I think, I think um, probably Mark McSherry and Tony McLaughlin will be uh, beneficiaries. Well, well, then, then Eamon Scanlon should be a beneficiary of some of that vote. Well, he's a bit further out, Pascal, you know. I, I appreciate mean, it. He is in South But Stigo. in terms of the choice, the ideological choices that people would have been making on that paper, uh, that wouldn't vote for the left, then surely they would be looking at... I mean, the other thing, I think Cherry Rennens will get uh, a significant slice out of it as well, because it's, uh, it's a, a poor business vote, and I think Cherry is seen as a, a kind of a business candidate. Yeah. OK, that's an interesting perspective on it as well. Maybe one that nobody else but only ha has focused in on John South McLaughlin. Only 556 of that 913 were actually picked up in County Sligo. Okay. 500, 556 in County Sligo, there are 400 votes coming from, from, the rest other, of the from their other parts of the constituency. Okay. Um, right, I, I think we have a break. Have we break to take Kevin? No, not yet. No, we haven't break yet to take it. Um, I'm, I'm interested in getting some sort of perspective on how long more it's going to go on for, because I know listeners at home are interested and those um, watching online are interested to know how long it, it might go on for. Maybe we, we might get some sort of a, an indication from the uh, returning officer as to how many more counts we can expect tonight. Is he going to call it a day at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock, whatever, and to find out what time again we're going to resume in the morning. But suffice to say, we're here until the very, very bitter end, be it tomorrow evening or the early hours of Monday morning or even throughout Monday. Um, Francie, might, um, Francie might come in in a few minutes if anyone else has any questions or queries. Uh, and just to remind people again of the, the social media aspect of this fancy Ocean FM Ireland is our is our handle on Facebook and Twitter and we are anxious that we get um, hashtag uh, Sligo Leak from trending isn't that right? Yeah uh, well, yeah, it was trending earlier on and just people were just it's a good way to get questions in as well as text yeah. obviously as well uh, just a few things here uh, for you um, when Perry goes will 50% go to Scanlon? Well, I'll give you a couple of questions, right, and then you can discuss it. So we're at 50%. Uh, somebody else was saying, is the Fianna Fáil Sinn Féin government a possibility? And the elimination of O'Keefe, Castlery and Bree will give the outcome. Anyway, you can take What's that. What's the last question? Uh, will the elimination of O'Keefe, Castlery and Bree give the outcome? Can I come back to the one uh, that you asked about? Uh, Pop, Perry's Pop elimination. State. Perry's elimination will not go. Fifty percent will not go. Not near fifty percent to 
Eamon Scanlon. We're reckoning here at the moment that maybe about 21, 22. Well, Michael Clark, John said 40% traditionally uh, yeah, I, went, and I think it'll be more than 20%. percent I it's would, only 800 votes. I would concur with the Michael Clark's thinking of that. I mean, I think I said it before that I think, you know, they're two from the same town that just literally yeah. live down the street from each other, and I'd expect that James Cannon to pick up 40%. Right, but didn't we vote. get figures in this many, many, many hours ago, John? Isn't that right? Right. In relation to, to Perry's tombs. But we did we did question whether there were whether there were Marion and myself discussed that and whether there whether they had been representative of the Ballymote areas where okay. or just a sample from the constituency can, on that. Can I just ask John, can you remember what uh, Tony McLaughlin was getting from Perry just even on 30, that? thirty five percent and uh, Reynolds twenty five. Reynolds was twenty five and Scanlon was twenty one. Well I'm just going to say something here. I'm going to stick stick my neck right out because I'm hearing a lot outside that Reynolds is very strong for it and that he would pip Scanlon. But Scanlon, if he gets that 20% from Perry, and if McLaughlin gets 35, but Scanlon, they tell me, is looking at 25% of uh, O'Rourke's vote. And that might put Scanlon ahead of Tony McLaughlin. They're all mites, and there's all a load of stuff there. But Scanlon has two bigger, has a bite of two bigger cherries. Can I put it that way? Yeah. He has Perry, which will be a big one, and he has O'Rourke, and he can expect a decent bite of both of them. Whereas McLaughlin yeah. might only get it from Perry. He certainly won't get it from O'Rourke. So maybe that last seat will be the South Sligo seat we spoke of. Yeah. And, and, that's and, where and you said a few moments ago that that uh, Eamon Scanlon was actively canvassing for number twos yes, in Leitrim. Leitrim. Yes, very much so. Well, I spoke to some Leitrim people who watched the tallies very carefully and they tell me roughly 25% to Eamon Scanlon, 25% to Kenny and 25% to Reynolds. That 25% will probably elect Reynolds. Uh, but if Scanlon gets it and he gets a decent transfer or a decent amount of Perry's votes, it may well put him ahead of Tony McLaughlin because if you look at it right now, he's 5'9 um, and McLaughlin is 6'3. Uh, There's 400 votes in it, Pascal. Uh, we have to see how the Sligo Town votes go there, but I think we could be looking at that as a. As well, a also, yeah, but you have to keep in mind, uh, as we were saying earlier, that Marie Casserly's 3,000 now, roughly 3,000 votes. Yeah. Uh, will they probably go significantly to McLaughlin rather than to Scanlon. Uh, although you don't know, she's an independent candidate and uh, her vote was all over uh, the constituency, uh, even though she's based in Grange. Uh, it goes back to the question I asked earlier, increasingly asking again of myself, how transfer friendly is Eamon Scanlon as we move into the next two eliminations? OK, we're going to interrupt you for a moment and go back to the floor. Um, Harry Keeney is with Councillor Rosalind O'Grady, Fianna Fáil Councillor. Harry. Rosaline O'Grady, Cahirlach of Sligo County Council, you were saying to me earlier you didn't think you would see this day coming for Fianna Fáil so soon after the last election in 2011. I didn't think. Being very honest, I didn't think uh, things would turn the way they have done. But I think, first of all, we have to pay a great tribute to our leader, Micheál Martin, who absolutely ran a fabulous campaign and it was an absolute privilege to be out with them. Again, we had a great campaign here. I was canvassing with Mark McSharry and we had a great campaign and a great great crowd of people out with us and we knocked on every door and went up every highway and byway to ensure that we would have a candidate returned to, to, to Dáil Éireann. Now you're a seasoned political observer, uh, Rosaline, and I was thinking earlier it looks like old times you have a McSharry and a McLaughlin, two names from the past that are in the, in the uh, race again today. Um, it really is like old times back again, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, it is like old times. And Ray McSherry and uh, McLaughlin uh, worked together very, very hard for this area, and that has to be respected. So it's, it's, it's uncanny that we have, again, McSherry and McLaughlin uh, more than likely going to the Dáil to represent this area. And Ray always prided in how he worked for this area uh, with, with McLaughlin in the past. So uh, hopefully... 
uh, we will, uh, whoever is sent off, that we that will deliver for this area because we need delivery. Recovery hasn't hit this part of the country yet. You probably answered my next question with that last comment I was going to ask you. Why do you think has Fianna Fáil rebounded so quickly? I'm not sure, but people in the East Coast probably would have felt uh, the recovery that, that Fine Gael and Labour have been speaking about. And in the West of Ireland, and certainly on the doors, we got it from the people that they didn't feel anything had changed. And I suppose that was one of the main reasons that people felt they would revert back and give Fianna Fáil another chance at it to see what we could do. The big winners today are Fianna Fáil and Sinn Féin. Um, how would you feel about Fianna Fáil going into coalition with Fine Gael? Well, I think that's not for today, but I certainly hope that we will have a stable government. And I think it's very important and that we're not back in six months on the road again canvassing. And I think it's very important that we get on with the business of the country and that we form a stable government, however that may be. I gather from your earlier comment that you would agree with the suggestion that the Fine Gael slogan of uh, let's uh, the recovery continue for some people, and I presume for a lot of Fianna Fáil people, they didn't see that recovery. I don't think so, and certainly the people on the west coast of Ireland, we didn't see that recovery. And we need jobs, and we need quality jobs delivered to this area, and that's one thing I'll be saying to whoever leaves this hall and is elected to Dáil Éireann, that we want delivery for this area. And of course, during the campaign, we had the loss of 100 jobs um, in Alanco and Sligo. That's the high-profile job losses. There are other job losses happening every week two and three jobs here and there that we may not hear about. Absolutely, and Alanco is an excellent employer in this area, huge loss of jobs. Plus in Sligo County Council, we're down over 200 jobs, some of it by natural attrition, but others uh, being redeployed to other areas. And that's a huge loss to this economy as well. Councillor O'Grady, thank you very much for thank taking the time to talk to me, I appreciate you. Thank you very and, much, And uh, we'll hand you over now to uh, Claire Mulcahy. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for that, Harry. And I'm joined here now by um, Sinn Féin councillor and also mayor of Sligo, of course, um, Thomas Healy. Um, as Harry was saying there, I suppose it has been a good day for Sinn Féin in general. And here, um, can you give us your interpretation of the figures? Have you had a chance to look at them yet? No, I had a chance to look at them, but it's, look, it's looking fairly good. We're definitely going to hold a seat anyways and hopefully push for a second seat if it can be. Like, as you see now, it's all, it's all going to be down to transfers and where the transfer is going to go. We still have a good uh, base there of nearly 8,000 in the Sligo area yet to be distributed. And then it'll be going down to where the, where the votes go from here on in. And being transfer friendly is the most important thing from here on in as well. Yeah, I know that it's said uh, sometimes that Sinn Féin isn't, uh, you know, very transfer friendly. But I suppose, as I was saying to Enda McGlone earlier, the next significant transfer would be Declan Bree. And I, I take it you would hope that um, Chris McManus would would benefit from that. Yeah, it, Declan Bree, if he, yeah, de we'll get a vote from Declan. And also you have people of more profit as well going out. But does mean Sinn Féin, uh, even in the, if you go back to local last local elections um, on myself and Sean, I mean, we were transfer friendly. We got votes from everywhere. So I think I mean, that trend might be changing a bit. It all depends on what area you're in and how close you are to the candidate beside you as well. So we'll just see how it works out in the end. It's going to be a long couple of nights ahead of us anyways. Absolutely. And I know, um, have you had a chance to look at the national picture um, which you've been and what's going on in other constituencies as well? No, I just, had a, um, just got a bit of a look now. I see... Um, <clears throat> Well, Mary Lewis tapped the pole up there and Jerry Adams has got in himself and has brought in uh that, I can't think of the girl's name, yeah, but that I brought her in as well. It's that time of the night now when the all head yeah. is going a bit yeah. muffled. So look, as, as I say, so we have 14, 14 TDs sitting and we have three senators and hopefully now we'll have maybe 25, 26 TDs going in at the end of it. But yeah. that's, it's all yet to play for us. It's down out to facts and figures now at the moment. Yeah. I know um, in Sligo Leitrim ye had a strategy, I believe, McManus was kind of covering Sligo. Um, uh, of course, Martin Kelly was covering West Cavan and Leitrim. Yeah. Martin was kind of focusing on Sligo and South Donegal. Ha, did that, has that worked for Sinn Féin? I know now it's it's not very clear who's going to take yeah. the seat. Yeah, it worked well. There's been we had a, a strategy there that Chris stayed in Sligo, Donegal and Martin stayed in Cavan, Leitrim. So it worked well. But I mean, at the end of the day, we're expecting a bigger vote out of some of the areas. And at, at some st at one stage, though, you were you were hopeful for two seats. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's the whole idea of putting the two candidates on to go for two seats. So it doesn't I mean, look like that now. Though. Well, it's early it's, days. It's yes. early days. So. <laughs> we're not ruling that now. The game is still on.
and the oh. ball is still there so we'll keep on going and we'll just see how it works out as it says tomorrow evening we'll have a better idea but. and when you were going around on the doorsteps um, canvassing I know you were out with Chris and things like that what were the what were the issues that were kind of coming up time and time again health issues water charges which mean the basic the people out there are still suffering that's the, that's the, that's what we're hearing on the doors there's mean a lot of school issues around Colony there's mean other issues water issues you have every sort of issue coming up and it just mean like that is it went down to what how can you help me where's going to help me or what's how is going to affect me I just mean when you're running here as I says the budgets and what what we're going to sell it to the people and how we're going to do it people that were kind of sick as well with forgotten promises and they were ta given this and they weren't getting what they were told then so I mean you, you were up against that as well but as I says what we were promising we were going to deliver on and that's the most important thing but um, any areas that you were done working we were guaranteed to get a vote out and just keep on working at them areas that's all we can do. Okay Thomas Healy listen thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. And we are, I think we're going to go over to uh, Harry Keeney now. How are you today? How is it going? I'm here with uh, Eddie David, who's chairman of the Rural Development uh, Committee of the uh, Irish Farmers Association. Um, Eddie, you have your ear very close to the ground uh, as regards rural affairs. There was talk of a recovery. Um, you would have felt and your members would have felt that uh, perhaps that recovery didn't show up here and maybe that's the reason why uh, Fine Gael isn't doing so well in the election this time. Well yes indeed I suppose uh, the recovery hasn't seemed to have hit this part of the country really because you know for the last four years uh, we have gone through hard times. Everyone has gone through hard times but I suppose from the farming scene in rural Ireland especially in Connacht has seen serious decline especially the smaller towns and the smaller villages you know we see them dying on their feet. And uh, I suppose, sadly, you know, when the farmer goes down the rural small towns, uh, it affects everyone in the smaller town because every penny that the farmer gets in, unfortunately, our incomes has declined seriously over the last four years. All the payments we were getting, reps, like, was a big, uh, it was a big check. That it was a very important check, you know. That's gone now for the last two years for a lot of farmers. And I suppose uh, it has a major effect right across the board. When the farmer is not getting the money, it's not been spent in the local areas. Ray McSharry, the former EU Agriculture Commissioner, was saying here earlier tonight that uh, the situation here in this country, it was like the pale, the recovery was happening there, but it wasn't happening in rural Ireland. Would you think that that played into the result that we're seeing here today? Well, I'm sure it has a big bearing on it because, you know, the the, the, the bigger cities like Galway and Dublin and, and Cork it has... There is a bit of progress and there is a bit of recovery there, but unfortunately, if you go back to Castlebar, the Taoiseach's own county, there's very little uh, prosperity there. You know, you see a line of a street of houses there closed down. Shops, businesses that was there for the last 50, 60 years, you see them closed down today. You know, so I'm sure that has a major impact on where Fine Gael has gone today and Labour. What would be the priority for the IFA here locally in Sligo and Sligo Leitrim? For, them, for the new government, the, the, the new administration that's coming in? Well, I suppose we met the candidates last Monday night in the Sligo Park and we had a fair old debate, like from all sides, Sligo and Leitrim candidates from both the 18, 16 of the 18 candidates was there and I suppose, as I said to them myself, I'm involved in rural development. It's one of the most committees within IFA that has an impact in rural Ireland. We, we in, we're involved in the, where the payments and where the schemes is being talked about and discussed. And I suppose to reverse the cuts that has been taking place over the last four to five years. That's my main priority for those, whoever takes over government, or whatever mix of, of government we're going to have in the going future. The recovery. If this recovery is going to be seen in rural in the west of Ireland and in rural Ireland, reverse the cuts that we have taken over the last four years. That's my request to them. Regardless Eddie, who takes over. Eddie David of the Irish Farmers Association, thank you very much. Thanks very much. Oh, thanks very much for that, Kevin. Um, I'm joined here now um, by Fina Gale, Director of Elections in uh, Sligo Leitrim, uh, Frank Feehan. Thanks a million for joining us, Frank. I know that you've been milling around here uh, today, but you just returned back into the Count Centre now. Uh, what's your perspective on things now, Frank? Well, I'm just after coming back from Roscommon, uh, and uh, things are, are, have moved on here. Just looking at, uh, at the Sligo town end, there seems to be about 13,000 uh, votes uh, with, uh, uh, with Phelan, with Mary Castley, Declan Bree, Nigel Gallagher uh, the, 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 for distribution around the Sligo town. And I'm thinking 
that Chris McManus and Tony McLaughlin could be well placed to pick those up. And of course, Mark McSharry, I, I'm, I'm deeming him to be elected. Uh, he'll pick them up as well. And you have about six and a half thousand uh, if Paddy O'Rourke goes out. Uh, and um, uh, 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 and uh, that means he's Des Guckian. Also, Susan Keefe in Sagatown. So uh, it all depends who goes out. I think there is a chance that Finney Gale could pick up two seats by the end of the night uh, uh, if things go Finney Gale's way. Uh, but it all depends on the transfers. But if I was in Sligo Town, there's twice as many transfers located around the town as Sligo Town. And I think those, uh, certainly, Mar uh, certainly uh, Chris McManus and Tony McLaughlin and, of course, Mark McSherry, who will probably uh, uh, be elected, uh, uh, and, but he will he will uh, stand to gain from those. So it's all to play for, and um, I don't think we'll know tonight, but uh, tomorrow um, I think the, a lot of the major votes will be going for distribution. Okay, and um, I know you said you were in Roscommon there as well. Um, how are things going over there? Yeah, um, the, the last seat uh, looks as if it'll be between uh, Eugene Murphy and Fianna Fáil and Maura Hopkins and Fianna Gael. Um, uh, you, you, um, you have to renew a candidate uh, going out now, uh, Farrell, and you have John Kelly, uh, the Labour candidate, will be going out as well. And Claire Coran, the Sinn Féin candidate, uh, will be will, will transfers. Um, Sinn Féin, uh, the candidate, lives near Balladrine. Uh, and also John Kelly lives in Balladrine and uh, uh, that Maura Hopkins should do well out of that but I, I, I just feel that uh, Eugene Murphy seems to be transfer friendly at the moment and he might shade it but again uh, it's still too early to call. And um, Frank I know that you were in the old Roscommon South Leitrim constituency of course and with the changes to this constituency here how do you what, what do you feel about that? I mean a lot of candidates feel that it's a, a monster of a constituency going all the way you know over from the, the Drummond area right up to Bundor and Ballyshannon and all that area. What do you feel as, as a person who was um, affected by constituencies in the past? Well I, I suppose if Roscommon uh, South Leitrim was still going uh, uh, I I will probably be going for election in Roscommon South Leighton. We had two great elections uh, uh, there and I was very, very successful. It's a huge constituency, uh, you know, up near the Radisson Hotel in Cavan, up to virtually Donegal Town, over to Ballina. It's a very, very different constituency which goes over four borders. And um, I, think, I think the high-profile candidates, and this is where politics is going maybe, the high-profile candidates now are the ones who are who are beginning to get uh, traction because of name recognition and things like that. But um, uh, it's, um, it's an unusual constituency, but that's what you get when your boundaries change, and we went from 166 down to 158, but I think it's the same for everybody. But I, I found that people living in the population centres, such as like a town, that uh, they have a, a good chance, but then sometimes the rural areas, such as the whole of County Leitrim, will stick together. Uh, I was just remarking, I, I met a uh, John Ellis today, uh, and um, uh, if I'm looking half as good, or, or feeling half as good in 10 years' time as John is looking and feeling we had we good fun today, I'd be very, very happy. But I, I, I have to say, I had, um, I was, uh, the, twice I got elected to the Doyle from Roscommon South Leitrim. There were two wonderful campaigns, and I, I, I have great, great memories from them. I know, obviously, it has, it's not a great day for, for John Perry, and um, his director of elections earlier, um, Thomas Walsh, was speaking to us, and he said this whole um, mantra that Fina Gale had with this, um, the, you know, the recovery, the recovery, the recovery just absolutely backfired, and it seems that that's, that's clear today, both locally and nationally. Yeah, uh, I, was, I was at a funeral in Tipperary about two weeks ago, and uh, just talking to the priest, I forget who he was, and he just said to me, he said, look, uh, this recovery, uh, it's a good slogan, but it, it's not resonating. And, and I did bring it back to Vinnie Gale to say I just didn't feel it resonating. And, you know, these things, I don't think that slogan would have... Uh, uh, I think there was a mood out there. And we are, uh, uh, you know, the, the whole... Uh, dynamic of politics is changing. You have so many uh, uh, independents, you have so many different parties and uh, the normal kind of established parties such as Fine Gael and you have Sinn Féin coming in and people for profit. I think the whole politics, like life, it's changing before our very eyes and sometimes 
politicians and political parties are behind the curve and uh, that's just the way you know the way my mother and father voted I probably uh, uh, probably voted maybe I didn't but now things are changing and that's uh, we have choice and we and uh, I think that's good for the electorate my, my one view is and um, I, what I'm reading from this and I've, I've said it the last two weeks is that Middle Ireland has said that they want um, a, a, a government and I want a government effectively I believe Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael and, uh, and uh, I, I'll say this within Fine Gael and I'll say this that if one of those parties and whatever happens in the coming weeks if they do not agree to what Middle Ireland wants and are going for a general election I think there could be huge difficulties out there because uh, what I was hearing most of the people wanted uh, a, a national government of Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil and I don't know how I don't want to get get into that but uh, but that's what was I hearing on the doorstep and they wanted something for stability. I know we're going over to Harry and Sinead Maguire there in a second but I know, just wanted to ask you on the Perry thing because um, as somebody who suffered because of the, the health issue and the downgrading of the hospital in Roscommon and now Perry of course had that issue with um, making the, the, the promise that um, the breast cancer services would be restored to Sligo University Hospital with 100 days of government and that didn't happen and of course those um, campaigners remained very unhappy. Do you think um, that affected his vote today as well based on your experience? Uh, possibly the same, uh, I might not be as familiar but uh, you know health issues are very emotive issues um, uh, you know uh, promises sometimes are made that shouldn't be made uh, sometimes events overtake them that and in politics you have to make that call you know what's the best thing. All I can say uh, I had to make a, dec a decision in Roscommon. It was the right decision. Uh, many people are alive today. The hospital is busier, but yes, it would have been bad, bad for my political health. Uh, I think uh, in John Perry's situation, um, I, I, I think it was a combination of things. Wonderful worker, uh, a great. Uh, um, well, uh, to me, was a great minister for a small business. Uh, got votes in. In, in all over Sligo and Leitrim and represented the constituency through his own personality and ability. And, uh, but I'm beginning to think that sometimes we might go to the well a bit too often. I'm even speaking about myself, I'm even talking about councillors for the last three or four years. People want something different and unless you're reinventing yourself, unless some issues come up, it can move on. But the days of People have been able to go and get elected for five, six, seven times. Uh, I think it's a, I think it's a, a new, a new life. But um, I just want to say, uh, John Perry, uh, uh, I, he served the people of Sligo and Leitrim uh, with great distinction, and uh, was a great colleague of mine. And and he will be missed. And you know, I think the last few months have been very, very difficult for John Perry. And um, uh, I suppose if we all had uh, a crystal ball, we'd look at it differently. But um, I wish him well and um, I, I, I hope um, that we'll see more of him in the future. Okay, Frank Fian, Director of Elections, thanks a million for talking to us. For Fianna Gael, we're going over to Harry. And I'm with uh, Fine Gael Councillor uh, Sinead Maguire. Uh, Sinead, not the best day for Fine Gael today. No, it hasn't been a good day at all for the party, nationwide as far as I'm aware. Would you think that uh, Fine Gael perhaps got the slogan wrong? Well, that's what's been reported widely. Um, my impression is that they tried to put a positive slogan. Um, we were in a very negative place, as everyone knows. Uh, five years ago, we were on the precipice, and Fine Gael brought us back from that. But rather than harping on the negative, they wanted to have a positive slogan, and they said they wanted to do it. That's Grand Sinead, thanks very much. It's back tonight. Okay, this will be the fourth count from Sligo Leitrim. The following is the result of the fourth count, which consisted of the distribution of Finbar Filan's votes of 913. Bree Declan, plus 52 giving him a total of 3,399,3399. Cassidy Mary, non-party, plus 122, giving her a total of 2,945,2945. Two, 
Gallagher, Nigel, Anti-Austerity Alliance, People Before Profit, plus 60, giving him a total of 1,950, 1,950. and Des, non-party, plus 36, giving him a total of 1,154, 1,154. Kenny Martin, Sinn Féin, plus 34, giving him a total of 6,473, 6,473. McManus Chris Sinn Féin, plus 28, giving him a total of 4,837, 4,837. McSharry Mark, Fianna Fáil, plus 143, giving him a total of 9,036, 9,036. McLaughlin Tony Fine Gael, plus 101, giving him a total of 6,338, 6,338. O'Hara Burney, non-party, plus 79, giving her a total of 1,344, 1,344. O'Keefe Susan, the Labour Party, plus 50, giving her a total of 2,036, 2,036. O'Rourke, Paddy, Fianna Fáil, plus 25, giving him a total of 5,511, 5,511. Perry John, Fine Gael, plus 35, giving him a total of 4,466, 4,466. Reynolds, Jard, Fine Gael, plus 55, giving him a total of 6,797. 6797. Scanlon Eamon, Fianna Fáil, plus 54, giving him a total of 5961. 5961. Non transferable papers not effective, 39. No candidate has reached the quota on this count. As there is no surplus for distribution, I will now exclude the lowest candidate and distribute his votes namely Des Gokian, 1,154. But as the hour is late and it's a, a long day for the staff here and I'm sure for everybody else, I, I am now going to adjourn the count uh, to tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock sharp. So we'll see you all then. Thank you. Okay. Um Right, well, we're glad to hear that because um, there's not going to be any conclusion quite obvious today. It's interesting that it's starting at 9 o'clock in the morning, which is earlier than usual. We'll just do a wrap-up. We look at that, that count, first of all, that four count, and I have to say, um, a little bit different than all of you were predicting, I would have thought. Not so convincingly, but in, in certain Both ways. Votes going everywhere, Niall. Yeah. I mean, who would have thought, for example, that Paddy O'Rourke would get 25 votes? Yeah. You know, and um, votes going everywhere... Uh, there's no pattern on it. We were talking about a Sligo. Now, of course, McSharry got 143, which is very yeah. significant. But there, Martin Kenny got 34, you know. Um, Gokian got 36. Um, sort of unexpected. But look, um, at this stage, um, I, I, it seems that... Eamon Scanlon might just not be transfer friendly enough. I mean, we're talking about a Sligo vote. Uh, himself and Reynolds. Reynolds got 55 Same, yeah, votes. And, and Scanlon, Scanlon got 54. 54 and yeah. it was a Sligo candidate. So m that maybe is not going to hold and I think that could tell at the end of the day. Pascal, okay. what do well, you think? Yeah, uh, although I have to say I was heartened somewhat by the fact that Eamon got a significant, relatively speaking, vote of 54 coming from Ballymote. Um, uh, keep in mind as well, if you look at the distribution, it seemed to have gone a bit left, notwithstanding not less, sorry, but within Sligo uh, I mean Declan Bree got 52 and I don't think that uh, Phelan and Bree would be ideologically uh, bedmates um, Marie Casserly uh, 122 vote, uh, along with written McSharry a 143 and there was some suggestion earlier on that this could be a reflective of a business uh, vote uh, in yeah, Sligo Noel, Town Noel mentioned that earlier, and, and, yeah. and Noel probably has a, has a view on it uh, so in that respect it helped the, the Sligo uh, the, 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 let's say the, the non-left 
uh, Sligo uh, candidates because Tony McLaughlin got 101. So I, I would have to conclude uh, that Fylan's uh, distribution was weighted towards uh, the uh, centrist parties rather than to the left. Noel? Yeah, that's what uh, we sort of had predicted earlier on. I mean, McSherry, Midlachlan and Casterly was the main beneficiaries of it. So, um, I mean, it is uh, more of a, a right vote than a left vote. I suppose it is a bit surprising that his vote scatters so much into Leitrim. I didn't expect that it might, but then I suppose he was the only renewal candidate in the constituency, even though he was Sligo based. He, had support all over the constituency, but um, I suppose it lifted all boats a little bit. Okay, John, your your views. On that? I'm just looking at that. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Filan got 134 votes in Leitrim. Those 134 votes strike me that they stayed within Leitrim with those 134. Given the fact as well that Eamon Scanlon has done a little bit better there. I'm just looking quickly. In Ballastadere, Filan got 19. Uh, 22. Uh, in Beltra he got 5. In Banada he got 8. Uh, in Bonanadan he got 4. So they seem to be the votes that went back to Eamon Scanlon in that particular area there. Granted some of them went to McSharry as well on that uh, as well. So over, overall the distribution uh, of the... Of the they seem to be staying geographically yeah, yet. Okay. The next one is, is, is a real important one, yeah, which the we, Guckian one. Which, the which you'll hear about at, at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, just a final round, just to, to, just to do overall, uh, just to do an overall uh, picture for people, and we've been at this now for what, 14 hours. Um, just to let people know, the only thing we can say with certainty is that Mark McSherry will be elected to become a new TD for Sligo Leitrim. And then there are five candidates fighting out for the remaining three seats. Uh, Tony McLaughlin, Martin Kenny, Eamon Scanlon, Jerry Reynolds and Chris McManus. There was a suggestion earlier that maybe Paddy O'Rourke is not completely out of the picture, but it, it's a bit of a stretch to include Paddy O'Rourke at this stage, isn't it? I think it is. Um, yeah. I mean, I may not be here in the morning. I'm, I'm heading for Brussels tomorrow, and That's I'm okay. really I, sorry. I'm going to miss no, all life, of this. Life goes on. Mary. Yeah, life goes on. But I'm sorry for myself. But um, at this stage, uh, uh, if I were to call it, I would call it for McSharry and Kenny and Reynolds and McLaughlin. I, I'm just afraid. I thought him and Scanlon might pick up enough votes, but... It's going to be a ding dong between them, but I, I think Scanlon might just not be transfer friendly enough because no, that's just my, my view yeah, on yeah, it. No, no, people are interested to hear that. That's my view. And what do you think, Pascal? Well, to me, the most significant development over the last few hours has been the um, sustain the staying power of Jerry Reynolds. Uh, picking up uh, significant, relatively speaking, significant transfers from Sligo-based candidates, which would suggest that he's going to be, he is transfer friendly. And it goes back to what Marion and I were saying earlier about Eamon raising question marks about whether he has the staying power. Um, at the same time, uh, uh, Tony McLaughlin uh, on 6338, there's still a lot of left of centre votes to go yeah. tra be transferred in Sligo. So um, th there, there isn't any certainty. You're, you, you're, you're correct in your assessment that there are five candidates chasing four seats as we, uh, as three, we speak. Three, three, three seats. Oh, sorry, chasing yeah. three seats. Sorry, five candidates chasing yeah. three with Mark McSharry increasingly uh, picking up. I mean, he is certainly yeah. uh, transfer friendly. And John does make an interesting point about the file and transfer in that uh, the transfers from Leitrim stayed in Leitrim. So does that indicate or predicate that, uh, say, the Paddy O'Rourke transfer will stay in Leitrim? Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, at this stage, Pascal, if you were to call it, you know, you've... you've I'm becoming increasingly be befuddled and confused confused okay. after 14 hours. Um, it's unlikely and, that you're ever... It's, uh -huh. it's rare that you're ever... <laughs> uh, I, so, I, I mean, McSharry is um, guaranteed seats. Yeah. Um, and I had assumed all along that Tony McLaughlin was going to take a second seat and that Sinn Féin, of whatever personnel, was going to take a third seat. Uh, I'm, still not, I'm still not certain that it's uh, that, that Martin Kenny Doris. is home. I'm not certain he's home and host. That's okay. all I'm suggesting. Okay. But, but the but is, and the caveat is, 
that the Paddy O'Rourke vote could be a significant help. But then Paddy O'Rourke has only got so many votes to distribute, and he can't give them all to Jerry Reynolds or Martin Kenny without including Jerry, uh, without yeah. including Eamon Scanlon and Mark McSharry. So uh, I think it's a little too early to yeah. suggest at this stage because I'm still focused very much on these Sligo transfers. Okay, no, no, I'm just focused on the Sligo transfers. Final, final comment from you in relation to how you think it will pan out tomorrow? Yeah, um, look at Niall, I'm still sticking with what I was saying earlier on that Sinn Féin is going to decide, you know, how the last seat will go. Uh, I think, I still think if it's um, Martin Kinney that's eliminated, and Tony McLaughlin. I think if it's Chris McManus that's eliminated, uh, I don't think Jerry Reynolds can get a seat. Okay. Um, Martin Kinney and Jerry Rinnens can both get elected. I, I, I think they're very far off the quota okay. and I just find it hard to see but, but Sinn Féin is going to dictate that. And John? Yes, the crucial one here is the redistribution. If, if, McMahon, if McManus can get 50% of that, that puts him above Kenny. I can see him going well at this stage going above Kenny. It, it, there's one seat for Sinn Féin. Will it? Will McManus be also gone above Rindles at that stage? I think McLaughlin is probably going to be safe enough in that he has votes going to come from Marie Casserly, Susan O'Keefe. Uh, I think they're the they're the ones, and John Perry, of course. The kingmaker in this O'Rourke's transfers on it. It's it's very difficult to call. It's down to a handful of votes at this stage. Whether it'll be two Fianna Fáil, two Fianna Gael, uh, one Sinn Féin out of, the, out of that, given that McSharry has already been elected, is okay. very, very difficult. It's very, very tight. Okay, we better let you all off to bed. It's been a long day. And can I thank you all sincerely for joining us and all the help you, you've given to our listeners all day long. Marion, just we, you won't be with us tomorrow, so sincere thanks to us, to you, for, for helping us out. Today, no, that's fine. I loved it. I yeah. loved it. Well, that's, and hopefully, Pascal and Noel and John will be around to, to, tomorrow morning. Oh, it's an early start for you, gentlemen. And um, I was just assuming, by the way, that uh, we won't get a declaration on the good team for about an hour. Yeah. Just by way of timing. Yeah. Okay. So, we're so the have count to resumes at ten o'clock. You would assume that's the fifth count. In, yeah. Uh, well, from nine o'clock onwards. It'll be interesting to see how many people are around at nine o'clock in, oh, yes. in the morning. Be a declaration for about an hour. Okay. I think Pascal, you're planning on a lion in the morning for an extra hour. Are you? <laughs> I'm just thinking of the listeners who may yeah. be expecting an instant to see. Yeah. There won't be. No, they have to. They have to make that fifth count. That, that okay. We'll right. we, we recap in the first hour tomorrow morning just to let people know where it's at. Mary, many thanks again for for joining us. Appreciate it for all your help. <coughs> thanks to uh, Pascal and to Noel and to John and to Michal Kulrivi and indeed to all our staff here, uh, to um, Kieran and Shifra and Francie and Kevin and Harry and Claire and the other Claire in their corner have been of enormous help to us today. Okay, we'll leave you from the Clarion Hotel in Sligo, from the Sligo Leitrim Count. We've got, we've got, and, and of course, obviously, uh, Shami McMahon is back in base, and all our team back in the base. Oh, Kira, yes, our, our young lad is back there too. Yeah, and Andrew and Kira, uh, I mentioned them all, that's and James right. as well. James, that's right. Okay. I, I can't. Okay, the Donegal Count is still going on uh, this evening, and uh, if you want to still hear politics until the hours of the morning, you can you can still tune to Ocean FM because we'll be linking into the Donegal Count, which is ongoing. Don't think that's going to finish tonight either, but they're going on longer than we are. So stay tuned. The Donegal Count uh, live from the Or Centre in Letterkenny is coming your way. We're back again in the Clarion Hotel, bright and early tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. We'll see you then. Stocking the most...